I'd like to call the regular city council meeting of Tuesday, January 26 to order. As always, we are pleased to be here today on the traditional territory of Treaty 6. We acknowledge all those who share a deep connection with this land. The city of Beaumont respects the histories, languages, and cultures of all of Canada's First Peoples, whether they be of First Nation, Métis, or Inuit descent, and appreciates that their presence continues to enrich Canada's vibrant communities. We are all Treaty people. Um, just before we get going today, I'd like to make one, one proclamation. Uh, Bell Let's Talk Day, January 28th, 2021. Whereas January 28th, 2021 marks the 11th annual Bell Let's Talk Day, a day of conversation and mental health. And whereas Bell Let's Talk Day promotes mental health awareness, acceptance and action built on four key pillars, fighting stigma, improving access to care, supporting world-class research and leading by example in workplace mental health. And whereas the city of Beaumont encourages its citizens to join the conversation through calls, texts and social media interactions to drive Bell's donation to, the, to mental health past $100 million, now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor John Stewart, to hereby proclaim January 28th, 2021 as Bell Let's Talk Day in the city of Beaumont, Alberta, dated this 11th day of January, 2021. Whew. Are there any changes to the agenda as presented? Thank you, Worship. We don't have any amendments to the agenda this evening. Okay, can you get a motion from a member of council to adopt the agenda as presented? Councillor Hendricks? Oh, thank you. All those in favor? Show of hands today. One, two, three, five, six, seven. That Aye. passes unanimously. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. <laughs> All right, on the consent agenda tonight, we have three items. I move that council consent to approve the following agenda items without debate. Item 5A, regular council meeting minutes of January 12th, 2021. Item 5B, committee of the whole meeting minutes of January 19th, 2021. Uh, and item 10A, Councillor Barnhart's report is information. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That carries unanimously. Uh, we have nobody registered for the open forum this evening. We have no public hearings. And our first resident, which brings us to 7A, registered presentations. Our first presentation this evening will be Recreation, Parks and Culture Advisory Committee. Report to Council is winner. Thank you, Worship. I will let in the board committee member right now. Can you hear us? Are you able to unmute yourself and turn on your video? Uh, yep, should be good. Excellent. Thank you, Martin. Council's ready for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Good to see you. Anytime, uh, Martin, uh, Mr. Carnegie, the, uh, the floor is yours anytime you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is the presentation coming up on your guys' end or do I present from my end? I don't know. You can share your screen or okay. I can see I if I can get it up. Yeah, I can share my screen. Um, oh, this is new. Sorry, new computer. Uh, okay, let's see here. Share screen. Okay, do you guys see it now? Do you see the screen? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Your Worship and Council. Uh, my name is Martin Carnegie. I'm here to do a presentation from the Recreation Parks and Culture Advisory Committee. So we're just uh, a group of people to get together and uh, help provide directions. <laughs> so there's a bunch of uh, notes here. Um, so we basically established in December 2019. Um, we got together to start talking about different aspects of uh, the community, things that we see, uh, take feedback from others. Um, so some of the things we've uh, been working with is the uh, recreation parks and facilities plan. Um, a little bit about the annual fees and, and how to work those into our programs. Uh, looking at recreation parks and facilities and arts facilities around Beaumont, uh, including the 80 acres to the west. 
Um, and then just generally getting different groups together to talk about how to prioritize and work them into the recreation and arts programs, get those involved. So we consist of a few members. There's uh, Dolores Seth, Grant Tolley, Indipreet Sidhu, myself, Russ uh, Colum, and oh my God, Vivekan Kamar. I hope I say his right, name right, sorry. Um, and also a couple of city councilor representatives, uh, Bill Daniluk and Stephen Van Neuenkirk, and then also Paul Suter is one of our liaisons. So the idea is for us to meet 10 times a year. We only met seven times in 2020 because, well, COVID really messed us up for, for some meeting times, but we were able to get back in and do the virtual meetings, which work, works pretty well too. So many of the items, we, we discussed a lot of items in, uh, in the seven meetings that we've had. So the, uh, the most recent one being talking about the ball diamonds, um, whether they go at Milieu or the, the uh, 80 acres to the west or somewhere else in town, what to do with the Canal LeBlanc uh, soccer fields, uh, having public engagements. So talking with a few various groups around arts and feasibility study, uh, the St. Vital uh, lands, the tobogganing hill there, the church asked the, um, the city to kind of take it over sort of and looking for ideas of what we could do there to enhance, enhance it further. So the tobogganing hill, um, looking at putting up a staircase uh, possibly there, uh, which would be really interesting. Uh, pickleball court, not so much relocation, but possibly or options of what we could do further for pickleball. It's like uh, one of the options we discussed is maybe providing lighting at the tennis courts so that they could have extended hours there. So not really building new facilities, but uh, using the existing facilities and extending it further. Uh, talked about the Bellevue skating rink. So what to do with that particular facility. Um, and right now it's, we're proposing just keeping it open for the next year or for this season and try to figure out what to do with it for next season. And I think there's a few options there. So we, like I said, we invited uh, community volunteer organizations, organizations to come and do presentations, just so we can get ideas of where they are and what they would like to see going forward. Uh, talked about an interesting idea of outdoor exercise equipment, You know, putting those on pathways or in a centralized location or randomized throughout the city be kind of interesting to try that out. We've seen that at different locations that seems to work. Um, talked a lot about trail connectivity, which I, I'd say the city's done a pretty good job of getting those all connected, but obviously we'd like to see better connectivity with those and looking at different um, paths as you go through the city, trying to find new ways of putting paths in. Uh, one of the ones is uh, wayfinding. So basically what this is, is putting up signage around town. Uh, you could have it say things like, uh, you've gone this many kilometers or maybe an interesting point about this particular area as you're walking around the city of Beaumont. Um, and then looking for other ad ways to, uh, to engage the community, get them more involved in uh, their say towards what type of facilities or programs they wanna see in Beaumont. And then obviously we take those recommendations and provide them to city council. So we had four presentations. Uh, we had the Beaumont disc golf. Uh, one of the major concerns for them was the, uh, the proposed, or not the proposed, but the turf field that's going in was gonna possibly interfere with their, their uh, golf course. So we had a presentation talking about that, how we could work with them around not interfering with their golf course. And if we had to, where we could do, look for options to put them. Uh, Triton Swimming came in to talk to us about the, uh, the HVAC unit. It was causing a little bit of noise inside there, which I think uh, to my knowledge has been, uh, I hopefully addressed, but I think it's been addressed. And then talking about uh, fees for lanes due to COVID costs. Um, also had the Beaumont Society for the Arts talking about things like uh, the Poutine Park. I don't know if that was an official name, but I think it's its kind of name that it was given in behind Mena's there, uh, where they had a lot of pop-up um, uh, arts presentations or art shows there. 
which is really interesting. And then they're also considering an amphitheater at the Four Seasons Park for year round activities. So something else they would like to have. And we also had the Pickleball Association talking to us about options of what they could do uh, to provide more facilities for their, for their members. And that's where one of the ideas came out about lighting for them rather than uh, having to build new facilities. And, and that was it. Excellent. We do. No. Sorry, go Sorry, excellent. That was an excellent presentation. We really do appreciate it. And I know that uh, we've gotten some great feedback over the course of the year from uh, from the committee and on, on some on some initiatives that council has been doing. So, uh, really appreciate it of the work and, and hope that uh, we can continue to to keep it up and keep going. Uh, open it up to members of council for questions for Martin. Any? I must have done a good job. I was going to say, you did a great job because <laughs> nobody's clamoring to speak. But, uh, oh, oh, oh. Councillor Montgomery. Yeah, I couldn't I could let Martin off that easy. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Martin, I'm not sure if you're aware, but in front of us is a, is a update from administration um, regarding the, the 80 acres. Um, you, you've identified it here in your presentation. Um, does the, the committee have uh, any thoughts from, from your perspective? Uh, no, not really. Uh, the, the biggest, the most important thing is getting the baseball uh, more diamonds. That's one of the biggest things we need to do. We know that uh, they've lost diamonds over time. And to me, it's very important to get them back some diamonds. The, uh, you know, I, I guess one of the things that maybe we should have been doing at first is, I, I don't know how much consultation was done with baseball in the original design, because one of the things I heard is the diamonds were too big. And I was like, okay, I really didn't know that. So that would have, that if, uh, if looking back, it would have been, we should have probably reached out to them about that particular design a little bit more to find out if that actually met their needs. Uh, so having talks with the, the baseball group is, has been very enlightening for that information. Um, I, I, I can't say that they, they explained to me about the way that the original design, they, they I think referred to it as a suicide design or something. I don't really <laughs> understand that. But obviously would have never occurred to me uh, I, because I'm not a baseball person. So um, I, I support it. I think that they need to, to have their facility. Great, thanks. And I think the reference, just to clarify, I think the reference to the suicide is because they were back to back to back. And we're okay. talking like Council Van Newkirk hitting bombs into the other park. Um, and so we don't want to be raining balls on other people. So I think, um, and, and I'm sure Mr. Suter is going to address it uh, later today, but thanks for the feedback generally on the committee. Um, appreciate that, Martin. Okay, yeah, just uh, one thing. I guess the one thing I'd have to add to that one is uh, my only concern with that particular design would be the size of the dog park. Um, but hopefully that's something, it's just a sketch. Hopefully something can work into that later on. You're muted, John. Of course I am. <laughs> Councillor Stout. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to, uh, not really a question, more of a comment. Um, thanks, Martin. Great presentation. Very informative. Uh, um, very pleased to see that the um, trail connectivity issues are being raised and examined. Because um, um, as you're probably aware, that's an issue I've been uh, very concerned with as well. And, and I think it becomes really important as the as the city expands, as more facilities are built, we can interconnect them. And yeah, the 80 acres, it just occurred to me looking at the proposals earlier um, for the for the new baseball diamonds and the dog part at the 80 acres, that's, that's, there's another opportunity. Let's, let's ensure that we've got some trail connectivity there. So I'm glad that it's, it's being addressed as, uh, as well as all the particular facility sites. So thanks for the report. Good job pres presenting. Thank you, and thank you very much, Martin, for the presentation and the update. The only uh, question, and it's more of a curiosity than anything else, is um, when it comes to the collaboration with the arts community, are you finding that is, um, is that what it is? Is it collaboration or is it generally uh, curiosity about what's going on in the different sectors? Do they feel represented on the committee? Like, how, how is that working? I'm trying to get my head around the Arts, Arts Council, uh, the Arts Society, and then the Recreation Committee. Like, how are they all working together around the arts community? 
Um, so I, I, if I look at how the way this group started at first, it was more focused around, I, I think, the sporting recreation activities. Um, obviously, we tried to, we're extending to the, the arts. That's probably the main part of we want to get into. We've had meetings with them in the past. And I, I, I believe, I'm not going to speak for what their feelings are, but I believe that we are working better with the arts group. And I think that uh, all of us realize that arts is su suffering for facilities in Beaumont too. So um, I, I, I can't speak for how they feel, but I hope they feel that we're listening. And, and Grant Tolley's in there and he represents them too, right? So. I was trying to remember who was on there that represented the arts community. And yep. remember back to when this was first being imagined a couple of years ago. Well, I don't know how many years ago it is now. It seems like a, quite a while. <laughs> Um, there was talk about should it be just for recreation and sports or should it be community services and it seems to be you know exploring those issues and I, th I don't think we need to land on that but I think you're doing a good job of trying to represent all of those different uh, interests in a, a way that's better for all of our citizens so I really do appreciate what you're doing thank you very much yeah I, I think our group especially putting the making sure we add culture in there too is to make sure that it, people are aware that we're not just trying to be for the sports group, we're trying to be for everybody. Good. Very good, glad to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Awesome, I see Councillor Van Newkirk's hand popped up. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Councillor Barnard, just to speak to that, I am an alternate on the board and uh, one of the, or the committee. And one of the things that uh, we decided to do was add a standing item on the agenda as well. Um, you know, uh, and it's an arts, arts section on the agenda to make sure that that inclusion was built into every meeting. And then more recently, the uh, there was a presentation um, from the Society of the Arts that Grant totally did on behalf of. And uh, so that's just in addition to what Mr. Carnegie had to say. And then um, I didn't want to jump up first, but um, looking close to last year. And I just wanted to say that one of the things that I've appreciated most about this committee is the brainstorming sessions that we've had around ideas and solutions and just um, the ideas that folks have been bringing to the table uh, that we've been able to to bat around and uh, Martin highlighted on a few of those tonight that you know there you know there's definitely a lot of nice to haves and not a whole bunch of need to haves but ideas have to start somewhere and I've been happy to talk through some of those ideas on this committee so thank you. Thank you very much. All right seeing no further requests to speak uh, once again, Martin, thanks for com coming in tonight and uh, presenting on behalf of the committee. And uh, once again, looking forward to the great work uh, as we move forward. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night. All right, which brings us to item 7B, live demo of Beaumont's new digital dashboard for council 2021 budget approved capital and renewal projects. I'll be keeping, there it is. There we go. Thanks, Your Worship, for having me. Uh, and thanks to the rest of council and residents watching at home uh, on YouTube these days. Uh, I just want to do a quick sound check and, and make sure you guys can hear me all right. Uh, thank you. Um, my job today is, is to walk you through a live demo of an exciting new digital tool for Beaumont residents. Um, the, the way that um, the agenda was titled is could be misleading. Um, so the idea was was the presentation is to show council, but I just want to make sure that we all understand that this um, digital tool, this dashboard, is going to be for residents of Beaumont, and it will ultimately be for everybody um, that wants to have a look at it. Um, so just wanted to set that clarification right off the right off the top. Um, also, before I start with the recent. Uh, windstorm and just a general risk of losing connection. We did shoot uh, this demo earlier today. So if I magically disappear, uh, Jen will be able to play a video for you and we'll still carry on. Uh, so we got that covered. Um, so with that being said, um, the digital tool that I'm going to walk you through today is called the Beaumont Project Dashboard. One of the links to our current strategic plan is that it will enhance the connectivity with citizens the information and the settings that I'm about to show you are exactly how the residents will see them during launch, which we are scheduling for the first week of February. 
Before we proceed with a live demo, I will note that we are still actively working on this dashboard. We're still tweaking, we're still changing um, minor things. Um, so there might be slight tweaks before we get to launch. Uh, and that being said, I will now share the dashboard. So here it is. I, I am on, uh, just to kind of set the stage here, I am using a web browser, as you could probably recognize, this is Google Chrome. I am gonna go full screen here um, just to maximize your guys' viewing area. Um, so please please don't get uh, confused. This is just in a web browser any web, and it's supported by any web browser. Um, this dashboard is gonna be shared over the internet at launch. So it can be viewed by, by anyone in the world uh, in theory uh, with an internet connection after launch date of the first week of February. Uh, the, da the purpose of the dashboard is to show Beaumont capital and renewal projects. Right now loaded into this dashboard, we have our 2021 capital and renewal projects. And we also have 2020 carryover capital and renewal projects displayed. Uh, and again, this is exactly what the resident will see after launch is what you guys are, what we're all looking at right now. Our communications department uh, has put together a comprehensive plan uh, that will be initiated on launch day. That includes how we're going to spread the word to as many Beaumont residents as possible, and also how we're going to make it easy for our Beaumont residents to access the dashboard. Now I'm going to walk you through panel by panel uh, through this dashboard and highlight some of the features. Um, so we're going to start with the simplest panel, and that's at the top here. Um, this is a non-interactive panel, so there's no buttons to press. There's no links here, uh, but it does have our, our beautiful logo in the top middle here. Um, so this is our title panel. Next, we go over to the left panel, uh, which is uh, the background is in blue. And we would call this our uh, dashboard description panel. So it is the high, has the highest level of information, including our launch date. Right now we have a placeholder there for that. It has a couple sentences describing what the Beaumont project dashboard is, talking about the capital and renewal projects. Uh, it also explains these filters on the left-hand side here. So the, two, the three filters that we have are type, estimated completion, and fiscal year. So what these are, are these will limit um, the, what shows up on the dashboard. So if I go and click facility here, only the projects that are facility-based will show up in this case, um, three. If I now click park, now it's gonna be facility and parks related projects or so up to four. If I click trail system, that gets us up to seven. Um, if I click none of them, then everything will show uh, that is in the map view that we'll get to shortly. Um, next is estimated completion. Um, so how we wanted to report progress is numerically based and we have four buckets that we're working with zero to 30 31 to 60 61 to 90 and 91 to 100. Um, capital projects can be anything from a report to a construction project there's a lot of variety in the city of Bowen as you know um, so after much debate this is what we went went with um, at this time and we've added some helper text here to describe what these numbers mean. For example, in the 31 to 60%, we expect a project to be in detailed design and or in procurement and or construction to just be underway, um, depending on the project type. So similar checkboxes to the type. If I click um, 31 to 60, um, you would expect zero to show up and, and zero does. We're, we're not in February yet, still January 26th. If I click zero to 30, uh, we see the vast majority show up. And actually, if I click 91 to 100, one project shows up. And the reason for that is because this is a carryover project. This is a 2020 project that was carried over into 21. And so that leads me down to fiscal year, which is our, our last toggle, our last um, filtering options on this dashboard. And right now, neither 2020 nor 2021 are cl clicked. So it will search both years. If I go ahead and now click 2021, it won't show anything that's 91 to 100% complete. But if I unclick that, then it shows up all the 2021 projects. If I click both, they all show up. If I click neither, they all show up. But I do have the option of just clicking 2020 
or just clicking 2021. So that's the left panel and we call that the description of the dashboard. Center left is what we call our active project panel. Um, this is where we have a, another colorful logo this time. And this is the total amount of projects that are being displayed based on what's being filtered and the map view. So just to make it easy, I'm gonna turn off all the filters and it shows our full 25 projects that we have in the dashboard right now. If I click on one of these, it zooms me in on the map and it pulses the polygon on the map. Um, and that is how this active project panel, it will continue to react based on the mapping and the filtering. That, that naturally leads me to what I would call the center panel, which is the map, poly, uh, the map component. It has all these polygons and they're connected to projects. So if I click the fire services training ground, that project is happening in the operations yard. So it, uh, we set up a polygon in the operations yard to indicate that that is the location of the project. Uh, not all projects have a physical location, but we did our, we did our best to illustrate that when possible. Um, you can also scroll on your mouse in and out and it will filter accordingly. You can also double click with your mouse as I'm doing right here and it will just zoom in, zoom in and your active projects will be updated. And then last feature is this home uh, icon in the top right will zoom out and you see all of the one. Last panel is on the right and we would call this the project information. And this is where you're getting into a little bit more detail about the individual capital and renewal projects. So we have uh, things like project name, pro project or program name, project ID. We have a description, we have the fiscal year. You see down here, we have the estimated completion, which is related to the left panel. And we have the same um, four buckets we talked about. Then we have engagement, whether it's we're looking for public engagement or it's an internal uh, stakeholder arrangement. And then we've also linked our service Bormont portal. So uh, to remind uh, those, the service Bormont portal uh, looks like this and it can be accessed through our website. We've used it for residents to um, indicate um, concerns like potholes or graffiti to our buildings. So we've given the residents the ability to within one click get to that dashboard and then now um, uh, request or indicate concerns about individual projects on the dashboard. Uh, and then lastly, we have pictures related to the um, to the um, project. So I'm gonna highlight one project. I'm gonna highlight the library bike program here. So I saw it here on the left-hand side. So I click it and it zooms me in and it pulses. And so this one makes sense. It's at the library. Um, it's initiating, it, it makes sense. 2020, 20, 2021, the approved budget is 25,000 out of the 2021 uh, budget zero to 30 and they got a nice picture of uh, the bike here um library doesn't get enough love so i thought i'd give them some love on uh, the project dashboard rollout um that is uh our demo i've covered everything uh hopefully it was informational and uh i'll hand it back to you your worship thank you thank you very much do appreciate that um, this is, looks like it's a great tool. Um, it's going to answer a lot of questions and keep, keep not only council, but our residents informed. So, um, I'm sorry if you, if you mentioned this, I miss it. When is this supposed to go live? We're, we're targeting the first week of February for our launch date. Oh, so fairly quickly. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, open it up to questions and comments from members of council, but great job on this is a, this is going to be a great tool. Thank you. Councillor Barnhart, followed by Councillor Danlock. Thank you. And thank you very much. I uh, really do love it. I think it's going to be very, very useful for the citizens and for the councillors, as a matter of fact. Uh, Keaton, I think that's really good to have the information all in one place. One little comment, and it could just be my eyes or my computer. I'm not sure if it's one of those. But the lines, the lines aren't showing up very crisp on the map. They're very, very gray, and they're, they're hard for me to see. 
um, not the ones that are blue, the ones that are gray and white. I'm just wondering if that, can, is it my computer? Like, are they really sharp for you guys? Yeah, okay. I'm, so I'm having the same problem. I'm just hoping that it's because it's being relayed on a shared screen versus on my own. So maybe yeah. that's okay. Because I, I do remember hearing from uh, a couple of the senior residents in our community that gray, gray print, not black, but gray print is really hard on the eyes, hard. And it may be an aging thing. And I may be suffering from that as well. So I just wanted to point that out in case there's anything you can do to make it sharper. The really good information. Councillor Danlock, followed by Councillor Munkoff Swain. Thank you, Worship. Thanks, Mr. Seabee. Uh, great presentation and uh, quite the tool. I'm really impressed with the uh, the four buckets on the estimated completion time. Very creative that way. And especially on the right side, right now I'm looking at protective service, service fleet renewal. I'm really impressed with um, the description, how you've done it, all the various options, source of funding, uh, grants or revenue and so, uh, uh, reserves and so on, budget, start date, completion date, really very, very informative. Question I've got for you though, this seems very innovative and we in Bowman like to be innovative. Has anybody else got this kind of tool? Other municipalities, have, have, have we got probably the, the best tool? Well, looks at this, I think we've got some pretty good creative stuff here. Are we, uh, are we setting the bar for other people who are trying to follow us, I think? Uh, <laughs> Councillor Danilek, I'll answer that. We're, we're probably um, not at the top um, there are other municipalities around Canada that have other tools, um, but we are definitely working on um, uh, mid-range, I'm going to say. Um, we will be doing better. One of the things that Keaton is very, uh, and his team are going to be doing this year is looking at all the feedback because part of the communication that a plan that uh, we're launching will be feedback at the end of the season so that we can improve uh, for next year. So it, it is a continuous improvement cycle for us. We have a lot of things we want to include, but we need to stay simple, get it, get people used to the tool, allow us to play as well. Um, so next year you'll see some enhancements. Well, if there's more to come, this is off to a very, very, very impressive start. So I look forward to see how this will be reacted by the public. But I think this is a great tool and really sets us apart compared to the municipalities that really are showing what, what we're doing for our citizens. It's really good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Your Worship, if I may add just one, one sure. thing to that. Uh, I, would, I would say per capita, we're at the top. So I'll, I'll, leave, it, I'll leave it there. Per capita, we're at the top. <laughs> that's, that's what Jen meant to say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right, Councillor Munkow Swain, followed by Councillor Hendricks. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. And a, a great presentation, um, Mr. CB, going through there. All very, very exciting. Um, uh, this is absolutely, uh, I think, what a, a lot of residents ask, certainly me about, and, and, and me trying to figure out what the information is. And so, to be able to show um, and point them to this is going to be excellent. Um, and I think it might help with the councillors as well, some of our inquiries. Um, I did have a question, and, and this is more leading on to, to Councillor Barnhart's uh, comment here. Um, so I, I'm just curious, uh, the, the thought process around not using Google Earth um, as part of the map and where people are a bit more familiar, they can recognize buildings and zooming in and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and I hate to pick it apart, um, but I, I do agree with Councillor Barnhart. Sometimes when you zoom in, it can, you can get a little disoriented in terms of where you are just in this initial demo. Was there a thought process around not to, to use that kind of Google Earth uh, layer um, for, for, uh, for this tool. Um, just curious on your thoughts on that. If, if I may, Your Worship. Sure. Um, thank, thank you for the uh, question, Council Markov Swain. Um, it, we did consider using a Google Maps solution. Uh, this, this is an Esri based product, which um, our whole GIS platform is built on. So what that lets us do is, is customize a lot more than the Google solution would allow us. And it also integrates with the different panels uh, with the left and the right much um, more succinctly. Um, and then also just drawing the detail on some of these polygons and thinking about expansion for the future where we wanna go, it gives us a lot more flexibility. Um, they're definitely, I, I, I really appreciate the, um, the comment about the gray because that's something that we're going to take back to our team and look at because um, we're definitely not um, stuck with gray. We do have some options there. So um, yeah, we feel that this platform gives us the best um, 
um, best um, uh, currently and also growth for the future. Maybe I'll, I'll ask the question a little bit differently and, and apologies if I'm not using the right technical terms. When I say Google Earth, I mean just that, that photo mosaic so you can actually see a, a mm. photo or a picture of it. Um, do, does this art um, us to uh, allow us to do that or is this purely, um, you know, I, I don't know the, the language, you can help me out here, Keaton, but um, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like if you can see it, if you can like visually get a bird's eye view of it versus just looking at a, a white and gray street concept. Um, does the, does the technology allow us to do that or not? Absolutely. If I may, Your Worship. Hmm? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the question. That Yeah, that would be, uh, we would call that aerial imagery. So using aerial imagery in the background. Um, so, so yes, actually, this is on our roadmap for 2022 to roll out for our next iteration. The one concern with that is it's a bit heavier when you, when you provide that functionality. So it'll be longer, longer loading times. So we're going to test with our aerial imagery company over 2021. And hopefully we'll have something of a toggle switch that will allow people to use the kind of light version like you're seeing here. Or if the internet speed allows, they can use the heavier version that they would see that aerial imagery so they could see the landmarks. Um, so yeah, we, we've, um, uh, SLT actually uh, commented on that um, already and it's, it's on the roadmap. So yeah, great, great point, thank you. Thank you, we'll get onto that uh, internet speed thing you're looking for as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear there's a project coming to council. Uh, Councillor Hendricks followed by Councillor Van Newkirk. Uh, Your Worship, uh, my interest would be in the Kennecle Regional Recreational Center revitalization. Can you, can you pull that one up just so we can uh, see how that plays out on your screen? Okay, just as a, as a quick reminder, we're, we're just looking at the tool. We're not looking at specific projects, but... No, I, I totally understand that. So I'll stand down. I, all I was trying to do is try to understand what I'm seeing if I open up something like that, that one's a little bit more involved. It's an indoor setting. I yeah, no, it's, get that. So, no, if it's a good uh, example for what you're trying to do, that's great, but. Thank you, no, I'll, I'll stand down, thank you. Councillor Van Newkirk, followed by Councillor Stout. Yeah, thank you. I was gonna ask about the satellite viewer aerial imagery too. So thanks for the answer on that, Mr. Seavey. Um, I think for me, it hasn't been said yet, but I think this is a, a step change. Um, this is a, a big shot away from, you know, quarterly updates on a spreadsheet and, you know, monthly verbals and all those kinds of things that we've been getting. So I think administration hits it out of the park with this one. Uh, big thanks, big thanks for me on that. You can't get any more transparent on, um, where the projects are at and how they've all come together here. That panel on the right highlights very succinctly, you know, how the decision was made, what's being done. Um, and as long as you have someone on keeping updates going on this, you know, that's the key with these tools and, and I know you do. So, uh, you know, kudos to admin, uh, this, this is a step change in how we report to uh, residents. So thank you. That was me. Thanks. Um, oh, fabulous. Uh, really great presentation of a terrific piece of software. I think this jumps us right forward into the 21st century and, and demonstrates you know, tax dollars at work in a, all over the, in a, in a really transparent way. It's, it's a terrific, terrific advance. Uh, a couple of quick questions. Um, what, I'm sorry, familiarize me again. What did the, um, what was the geospatial um, software called again? I missed the name. Uh, may I, Your Worship? Yeah, go ahead. It's Esri. Esri is the suite of products that uh, supports the dashboard. Okay. E-S-R-I. E e okay, that's... <laughs> years ago, I worked on uh, Alberta transportation databases to do something similar, but it's come a long way since then, and this, this definitely reflects that. Um, Second question was the estimated completion bars. I noticed they are 0 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, 91 to 100, as you described, um, not, not even increments, although the, the graphic suggests that. My immediate reaction was why are they not 25% each? Um, was there a reason that you chose to concentrate on the, on the last 10%, I guess? Uh, may I, Your Worship? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Stout. Uh, yes, we definitely batted this one around quite a bit. The main reason is behind uh, 
typical warranty work that happens after a construction project is complete. So this, this will account for carryover projects um, into future years where we'll be able to mark them as 91 to 100% complete and just in the warranty phase. Um, originally, as you would think, we did have the logical 25% increments across the board, but then we, we would be marking um, projects that weren't even complete yet that maybe were 80% complete along with these warranty projects. So uh, we, we wanted to think slightly outside the box and uh, go with this increment. Um, of course, um, it's, it can be changed, but that, that was our thought process. No, I, I, that makes, what you've described makes perfect sense. Um, I was just, it, it, uh, the only, I, I don't know if I may suggest that maybe the graphics need to be, you know, you need three bigger boxes and one smaller mm. one. There's a, um, just to emphasize the point that these are not equal, um, increments but yeah uh, no it's that's that makes perfect sense to me thank you appreciate it i i think this is uh, tremendous um who is the the intended audience is not just council and city staff right the intended audience is residents and anybody who takes an interest in this uh, absolutely the intended ten, uh, primary audience is is residents beaumont residents is the primary audience so yep yep anyone okay, so and it will we, be accessible to anyone in the world so whatever project you're interested in, however you want to, whatever you want to see about how the city is spending tax money, you can find out through this. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, take no further requests to speak. Uh, once again, I'll just uh, summarize all of council's uh, thanks um, for putting this tool together. I think it's a, gonna be a great tool for council. It's gonna be a great tool for our residents and, and uh, Look forward to its next iterations as we go. Great Excellent. job. Thank you, Your Worship. If I actually, uh, Councillor Van Newkirk uh, tweaked me. I, I was just going through my notes to make sure I caught everything. I do have one just final sure. thing that I did miss in my presentation is um, the updates. So we're, we're planning on updating this monthly. So on the first of every month, the uh, information will be updated. So that's a balance between the, uh, the administrative load and keeping people up to date. So that's how we're envisioning this uh, dashboard. I skipped over that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ah, so that brings to a close item 7B, which brings us to se item 7C, baseball grant proposal. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to admit the um, minor baseball league, Neil and Warren, and I'm just gonna ask Keaton if he can shop, stop sharing his screen for us. Excellent, thank you. Not that we're not happy to see that dashboard. <laughs> Chandler. Looking for one more. Uh, Neil is just connecting to audio. So Neil, when you're ready, you can turn on your camera and turn on your microphone. And Warren, we're ready for your presentation. There, there we go. go. Sorry. So welcome, welcome to council chambers this evening. As such as they are, run on a virtual screen. So the floor is yours whenever you're ready. All right. First of all, uh, city council, thank you very much. So I'm Neil Jorgensen, uh, and I'll be co-presenting with Warren Chandler, both from Beaumont Minor Baseball. Uh, we want to thank you for the opportunity to provide a, a quick glance into our current situation and how we'd like to be a partner with the city to provide help in changing our situation for the better. Uh, the West Recreation site is very exciting for all ball groups in Beaumont as it adds inventory to the city's baseball diamonds that are so badly needed. Beaumont Minor Baseball Association specifically is very appreciative of this project. Diamond space and availability is such a significant challenge. This project allows us to feed our appetite for growth and provide a wonderful opportunity to enhance our kids' experience with baseball in Beaumont. With that, I'm sorry to cut out here, but was the presentation, was that going to be put up for us and we can just have it flipped? Uh, Shalane, or do you guys want to share your own screen? Thank you, Worship. Um, we actually did not receive your presentation. So if you do have your presentation in front of you, if you would like to share your screen. Okay, I'm so sorry for this. It was uh, sent to me, but. Well, no worries. We'll work through it.
Give me two seconds here. There we go. We got you up. All right, again, I'm very sorry for this. Okay, going on. So baseball in Beaumont, or sorry, ball in Beaumont. Uh, we've got three user groups. Of course, there's BMBA, which is made up of around 400 youth players. Uh, we're ages five to 18 and 100% local residents. Uh, one point I'd like to bring awareness to also is the Girls at Bat program. Uh, we've just been accepted as a, as a partner in this program administered by the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, it provides us with programming and resources to help attract, develop, and retain young female athletes. Uh, we have two wonderful women on our board, Jamie Turriff and Ashley Miller, who will be our leaders in this program. Next, we've got obviously the Beaumont Blitz, and they have approximately 100 female youth players. And again, they're 100% local residents. And then the third group is the Slow Pitch Association, which they're, uh, they're less than 50% of uh, residency in Beaumont. I just wanted to bring a quick, uh, I guess, quick awareness to the youth associations with Beaumont. Um, I understand there may have been maybe a, a misunderstanding of the, of the difference between BMEA and Blitz. Uh, BMBA has seen significant growth over the last years and we were very close to 400 now and Blitz itself at 100, really what you're looking at, at ball for youth in Beaumont, we're, we're close to 400. So a very healthy number for, uh, for ball players in Beaumont. So our current diamond situation right now, um, one point I'd like to just allude to is last February, if we can remember that far back pre-COVID, um, all three ball user groups being us, Blitz and uh, Slow Pitch actually met and alongside with city administration uh, sat down to determine what a fair allocation of the current diamonds were in Beaumont. And actually it demonstrated a really strong willingness amongst the three groups to collaborate and come up with the best situation for not a good situation. Uh, so currently Beaumont, we've got the three diamonds at four seasons, one, two, and three, along with uh, the East Diamond at Bellevue. Uh, Bow Meadow is shared by both us and Blitz. Bellevue West is shared by us and Blitz. And going into this year for the first time, Colonial West was going to be shared by us and Beaumont uh, Slow Pitch. And then just due to the, our numbers, uh, we, uh, Beaumont Minor Ball, actually have to go out of town and use both diamonds and new Sarepta all week long. And so just in general, you can see there for all ages in Beaumont, Four Seasons Diamonds makes up about 40% of the total diamonds we need to, to currently run our programs. So the one situation I'd like to, I guess, bring further awareness to is the, that other portion. Uh, so our 11U and 13U category, which is our nine and 12 year olds, makes up about 150 players or about 40% of our total registration. Uh, it's a huge out of town component and commitment, of course, to our families. It's a big bottleneck for growth, thinking that 11U and 13U is really critical because registration can drop off after that point. We want to make sure we retain those players. And unfortunately, we're at a point where we have to put limits on our registrations at those age groups. And this is after we already make larger teams to do our best to accommodate as many as we can. So with all that being said, BNBA wants to be a part of the solution. This brings us to the West Rec site. Uh, part of the discussion regarding the West Rec site is regarding the future program area, which is indicated there on the, on the screen. 
We really urge council to understand the importance of this area to support youth baseball in Beaumont. Um, we really feel that this piece of property in this site is extremely vital to help continue grow all ball in Beaumont, being all three groups. BNBA wants to partner with the city to help bring a fifth diamond to this site a reality, meaning we wanna help with the financial cost to make this happen. I'd now like to pass it over to Warren, who's gonna discuss a, a very exciting opportunity that we wanna share. Thanks, Neil. Your Worship Council, my name is Warren Chandler. I'm the co-development and fundraising coordinator for Beaumont Minor Baseball Association. Neil did a great job of letting you know where we've been, and where we are, and where we want to go. And I'm going to tell you how excited we are to help you get us there. The best part of being involved with Beaumont Baseball is the opportunity to coach the amazing boys and girls who live in this community. And in Beaumont, we teach our kids to think big. In fact, our association is all about dreaming big. From our president, Scott Cadets, whose father was a founding member and built this association from the ground up, to our incredible board members who are all leaders in this community and they contribute so very much in their lives. Like my friend Dylan, who I know is watching right now from Champs Valley, who many of you know very well. You heard from Neil this evening and he along with Justin, Brant, Dave, Chad and Bryce are some of the most talented youth coaches I've ever had the opportunity to work with. I have no doubt you're gonna be seeing their names very soon under the headline of a banner entitled Provincial Champions because these coaches dream big and they teach their players to do the same. Like Neil mentioned, our board is lucky to have Allison, Jamie, and Ashley, three individuals who are developing and leading our new girls baseball program in cooperation with the Toronto Blue Jays Academy. They're working to develop and guide not only the next generation of Beaumont female baseball players, but the next generation of future leaders in this community. We dream big because we believe that's the only way to go. That's why and how we started along an exciting opportunity that I'm bringing to your attention right now. This whole idea came from two friends, Bryce and myself, watching a Blue Jays game last summer, when during the break, they announced 12 communities across Canada who received a grant from the Toronto Blue Jays Foundation to help them grow baseball. And we started asking the question, why not Beaumont and why not us? So the Blue Jays Foundation, like you see on the screen, their Field of Dreams program is the baseball equivalent of the Kraft Hockey Bill program or the Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup. It's a big deal. This program provides funding to design, refurbish, and build safe spaces for children and youth to play baseball, develop life skills, and learn from positive role models. In the last five years alone, this Jays Care community has committed over $8 million to 66 projects across Canada. So we decided as a board to apply for this grant in September. We filmed a video with several of our young kids at uh, Bellevue Park, and we submitted our initial application with nothing more than a hope, a prayer, and a very big dream. We received an early Christmas present in December. We were told by the Toronto Blue Jays Foundation that our application qualified for the second round. Just so you're aware, a majority of applications never make it to the second round. Just getting to this point is a huge win and we couldn't be more excited. Next slide, Neil. In fact, Alberta has only ever had four successful communities receive this grant. The last was St. Albert in 2018. So I'd say Alberta's due for another project to get approved. When we learned we qualified for the second round, our excitement grew and so did the workload, but we continue to dream big. And with big dreams comes a lot of work. Since December, we've been working in cooperation with city officials, particularly uh, Paul Suter, to help us complete our application. And this is where it's important that we specify our grant would be for a fifth diamond at the West Recreation site in the space that Neil showed you currently labeled as a future program space. It is our hope and it is our big dream to help fund a fifth diamond at this site. This will not only allow us to host more baseball programming, but to host future tournaments, championships, and the Toronto Blue Jays training academies where we can bring kids from all across Alberta and Western Canada to come to Beaumont to play, learn, and enjoy baseball, courtesy of our involvement, the city of Beaumont and the Toronto Blue Jays. This grant with the Jays Foundation is a once in a lifetime opportunity, not just for our baseball association, but for the city of Beaumont. We believe the timing is perfect. With the, rest of the West Recreation site proceeding this year, the time is now to proceed uh, with this extremely hard to get grant. Our strongest reason for applying for this grant is we're in desperate need of more diamonds so that our, um, 
to play baseball. Indeed, one of the highlights of our application in our video was having several young boys and girls look directly into the camera and politely ask the Toronto Blue Jays to help us get more space so they can continue to play baseball with their friends and we can have more opportunities in Beaumont. This is the basis of our application. This is why we are both optimistic and excited that this is the best year for us to apply and potentially receive this grant. Everything that makes Beaumont unique, being Alberta's newest city, Alberta's fifth fast, or Canada's fifth fastest growing city are all reasons the Blue Jays want to work with us. But I want to be very clear. Regardless of whether we obtain this grant, Beaumont will still have a need for this fifth diamond. We want to make sure you understand that even with five diamonds, we will still need to send players out to New Sarepta to play baseball. The need will still be here, but let's be clear here. This is a very good thing. Our willingness to come to the table as an association with contributions to help fund this project will also remain. We believe we have a role to play as one of the largest youth associations in Beaumont in fundraising to help see this big dream come through to the finish. And our willingness to work with the city in this regard will continue throughout this year, next year and beyond. So this is why we have come before you today as an association. We have a tremendous opportunity before us, a once in a lifetime chance. We appreciate the opportunity and we hope we can count on your support. And while we appreciate to come before you today and we very much uh, value the invitation, we would love to return the favor to all of you when this spring, we hope against hope that we'll be able to all gather outside with hundreds of our kids, players, families, and everyone who loves baseball in Beaumont and celebrate an announcement during a live Blue Jays game, letting us know that Beaumont, Alberta's newest city, will be the newest location for a prominent high performance field of dreams. And then we will celebrate as a community with all of our children and all of our players. And we will show them what can happen when we all dream big together. So we'd like to thank you for this opportunity today. We very much look forward to your questions. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Neil to wrap things up. Thank you, Warren. Uh, I know we've, uh gone right to the limit here in time. So I, I think with that, we are, uh, again, very thankful for the opportunity and would, and would love to uh, answer any questions that you may have. No, do you, do you appreciate your coming in tonight and, and, uh, and doing that. So I guess the first question is, is, is the first couple of questions is, is how much is the grant? How much will the grant cover? How much is it for? What timelines are we on um, to get this done? Because I, Go ahead, Warren. I, I did have a quick chat with Dylan and, and know that the, some of this timeline may be fairly tight. Absolutely. So the tight timeline actually works in our favor, Mayor, because the, the Toronto Blue Jays are on an even tighter timeline. And what that means is when they give us money, they want the project to go full steam ahead. So they put an 18 month limit on the project being complete, not just started, but complete. So that means this, from the time the grant is issued, we have 18 months to have the project done to the satisfaction of our grant. In terms of the amounts that we requested, the amounts are based on, uh, it's, not a, it's, not, it's not like Craft Hockey Bill where you get one lump sum payment, okay? So the Blue Jays will fund the cost of our application. In our initial phase one application, we did apply for a six figure grant and the Blue Jays agreed um, with our application. Now we're at the point of putting in the detailed funding requirements and uh, designs to go along with that. So the long and short of the answer is it'll be in the six figure range. Um, I'm reluctant to give you an exact number because until we get those final designs, we won't know. But most importantly, our hope is building a fifth diamond in conjunction with the other four, there'll be cost savings and other opportunities. Um, the other factor to keep in mind is BMBA is willing to come to the table with a substantial contribution um, ourselves. And that is currently being negotiated and discussed with Paul. And that would also um, be quite, you know, it's gonna be the largest probably investment we'll be making as an association but nothing's more worthwhile or worth raising money for than diamonds. So um, that's where we are. The time frame would be the Blue Jays typically announce these programs in the spring during a game uh, because they want to get that construction season in. Last summer was different because of COVID. So our hope is we would hear in the early spring, get some very good news. And in the very next day, we would uh, undertake that work. Because I know, because I know with that West Diamond, with the West well, we got an update coming tonight, but the intention is, is to get it out to tender and get, get construction on the roll. So um, timelines are a little tight for us too, if we're going to add this fifth diamond. Absolutely. So I guess the question tonight is what, what's, what's your specific ask of council? Like, do you need a letter? Do you need like, 
we received a very generous letter of support from uh, this from Paul Suter in the city, basically saying that they, they are in touch with us. Um, the application does require us to uh, the city to guarantee that the land is city owned and the land is available for the project. So that's our our big ask of the of the city is is to commit that they're willing to uh, put that on the application that the land is available if the Blue Jays decide that we're a strong enough applicant for the project. And when's this next phase of the application due by? So the application is, it, we're right up against the gun. We need to get it in by the end of day on Friday. And to date, we've had some very strong conversations with Paul. Um, so we're, we're pretty much at the point where um, we're, we're almost ready to submit the application. Okay. Assuming there that everything does go according to plan. Yeah, yeah assuming everything goes great. Um, well, I... I get, probably got a couple more, but I'll open it up to questions from other members of council. Uh, and if they don't get my questions, I'll ask them at the end. Councillor Hendricks, followed uh, by right. Councillor McGrath Swain. Uh, Your Worship, uh, to the presenters, just a general question. Uh, what would happen if the, there was an addition of lighting? Uh, would that assist uh, with your schedule? Sir, just I'm clear, you're asking if you were to add lighting? Yeah, lighting to the diamonds. Uh, would that assist with your uh, scheduling of, of games practices? To be to be honest, it, it would give us an extra hour or two in the early spring, late fall. But you know, we're not Southern Ontario or, or the Lower Mainland BC where lights play a much more significant role. Um, but at the same time, you know, for Four Seasons Park, for example, uh, if lights are going in for the new uh, football complex, you know, the opportunity to turn, you know, to have other lights turned around and um, used for the baseball diamonds, absolutely, there would be an asset to it. I mean, you know, I was, I had uh, parents screaming at us to take kids off the field in uh, September, October, because it started getting dark and the kids refused to get off the field. So you probably might save me a little bit of grief from the parents that we could stay out and play a little more baseball at night, but um, it's a significant investment. So we, we would, uh, we would encourage it for four seasons, absolutely. But obviously at the West Recreation Space Counselor, there's no power, so that would be another challenge. Thank you. Councillor Margaus Wayne, followed by Councillor Newkirk. Yeah, thanks, uh, Your Worship, and, and, and really appreciate the update, uh, Mr. Jorgensen and Mr. Chandler, for coming in today. Um, you know, I, I know your, your board made up of volunteers uh, working incredibly hard to bring this, uh, this opportunity to, to the city. So um, first up, just a thank you. Um, great, great job uh, getting it together. You, you know we've got another agenda item later on, so I won't, I won't talk about that here. Um, but just just really wanted to, to say thank you for, for the work that you that you guys done and and please pass on a special thank you to Ashley and, and Jamie for that girls at bat program that, that's super exciting um, I, I know um, many folks would be be very very excited about that so that that's that's really great to see uh, and and also just to see the, the organization the coordination that that's in front of us tonight so um, as I mentioned I, I won't get into too much in terms of uh, my thoughts here in front of in front of us or wait for that agenda item but I just wanted to say thank you for coming in and, and just a great job uh, getting getting to that stage that we're at right now. So I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Councilor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. I think it, it was really good. One of the things I like when organizations come in front of us is to when you're able to quantify the membership and and show and remind everyone, you know, the impact that the organizations do have in the community. So that's awesome. Um, you hinted at a... Uh, substantial contribution um, to something like this. Um, so looking forward to hear what, what that could look like in the future. Um, a question on the space, um, the, the box and the dotted lines on, on the picture that you put up there, does that represent uh, enough space to do what you're hoping to do? Like, is that enough space for the vision? Great question. Uh, yes, actually, our vision is to have another, a third of the exact other two diamonds. So those are 225 which, um, and the beauty of 225, I know earlier, uh, Martin Carnegie from soccer was talking about, he, you know, the size of diamonds, right? So we had great conversations with him. Um, but yeah, you're right. 225 allows us, counselor, to um, use 13U and 11U uh, programming on those diamonds. Those are our two most at need uh, programs. And also, you know, one of the exciting things is those are our two most competitive programs. Um, you know, we're not selling uh, you guys a bill of goods to say that we have some very talented players in this community and you're going to start to see there was some results coming and it's going to be amazing. And when we host these tournaments and bring kids from all around Alberta, um, you're going to see some unbelievable baseball at that age. 
And so what we really want to do is build a crown jewel baseball diamond for our 11U, 13U kids, and maybe our nine and 10, uh, eight, nine year olds can use it as well. And it'll just be something that everyone in Northern Alberta is going to want to come to and play on. Awesome. Great. And then uh, just back to the collaboration and sharing of space uh, that you chatted about there. Uh, where does some of the slow pitch, local slow pitch uh, fit into that? How, how does that work? Um, is there room? Um, you know, are there space conflicts there? Maybe just tell me a little bit or tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So as far as great question, thank you, Councillor. Um, with the proposal as is the, the two larger diamonds would be okay for slow pitch. Um, obviously the smaller diamonds would not be a good fit. Uh, currently slow pitch uses just under two diamonds a week. So really these two diamonds, um, should work within their, within their, uh, needs. And as far as the collaboration piece goes, the allocation, I think is another issue after the fact that, you know, we just really want to get the inventory up. And then as we've shown in the past, as three user groups, we can work together to, to find the, the proper allocation. No, and we, okay, that's good. That doesn't, no, no barriers really then. Yeah, no, we definitely appreciate it when everybody's willing to work together and share the space and, and maximize it. Cause as we all know, uh, space is hard to come by right now. It's, we don't have an overabundance. So if we can maximize what we got and what's, what's coming up in the future, that's always a great thing. Yeah, thank you. Um, ooh, Councilor Danlock. Here I was about to wrap. Councilor Danlock. Thank, thank you, gentlemen, for the presentation. Great information. And I, I echo Sam's comments on the work you guys do. I and mean, it's volunteer groups are important to our, to our community. And you guys are doing a, a great job. So a couple of quick clarifying questions, if you wouldn't mind. Just to clarify, are you suggesting then a third 225-foot diamond um, is that what you're suggesting? Is my first yes. question. Just in, to the clarify. Future, in the future program space, yes, it would be a dinner 225. Okay, perfect. And if, if your presentation suggested that these four diamonds that we're building for the citizens of our, of our community and, and your user groups specifically are well, going to be well used and long overdue, as we all can agree to that. So you're suggesting that even a fifth diamond uh, from a user capacity is still required. When we first yeah. start talking Sorry. Yeah, counselor, one of the jokes that was made by our group yesterday was if you built us eight diamonds, we would use all eight with and still have to need more space. Yeah, okay. well, I was for short of that. space, for short of money. I don't think eight's on the crime board. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm sure. we were talking before about <laughs> capacity and, and need, and these four will be used from the get go, and the fifth would definitely make things uh, somewhat easier. So, can you give me an idea, if you could, what is the maximum? grant you might get from the Blue Jays if everything falls in, the stars line up and everything works out well. Give me an idea what the maximum could be. And I also want to congratulate you for coming with the idea of contributing to the program as well, which is very hard for user groups to do. And we do appreciate how hard it is to fundraise and, and do that sort of thing. So your contribution will be much appreciated toward this idea. So what is the maximum ballpark you think you might get from the Blue Jays if all the things line up properly? Well, to be honest, what we're going to apply for, Mayor, is... Um like the same sort of ballpark you would see in um, four seasons, the dugouts might not be brick. They might be fenced with a, a metal sheet metal, like the, which is the newer model you're seeing in communities. Uh, but the reality is the way the grant works is you apply for what, uh, what you believe the project will cost. You let the blue Jays know how much you're going to contribute and then you roll the dice. So it's, and it, it's, it's not in their interest to build a, a half diamond, right? I mean, yeah. one of the things the Blue Jays want to do, and I do encourage you to go to their website, um, there's some amazing pictures for some of the facilities that they have built across Canada. Mm -hmm. And you're talking a Blue Jays logo, a big Blue Jays logo on the backstop, Blue Jays logo on the dugouts, the colors, getting, they want a diamond that will reflect well on what they represent, which is baseball excellence. And, and that's what we want to represent. So to answer your question, we're going to throw everything we can at them and say, we want to build a crown jewel for Northern Alberta in the fastest growing city in, you know, in Alberta, and we wanted your help to do it. If they decide they can't fund the whole thing, so be it, but we're sure going to make that, that case. Absolutely. Okay. If I may ask one last question, if you don't mind, then on that, on that vein of your application, did you uh, project based on your application requirements, what the project may actually cost the way you have looking your vision for that particular diamond being a, a crown jewel. I love the idea and, and the vision of it. Did you have, did you give the, the Blue Jays a, a ballpark number uh, as part of the application? Give me an idea. If you can't, that's fine. But if you did, sure. I'm curious. Rough, rough cost estimates for our grant application would be between, I would say, would 
or, or, or right around the 100,000 level. Um, but that can obviously go up or down based on what the design actually comes out with. It might go higher um, based on what we're asking for, but that was the rough number that we asked for on our original application. Now what they're looking for is the detailed um, cost estimates to back up that number. That was 100,000 you said, just to be clear? Correct. Correct. Thank you. Um, I'll have a questions. Thanks, gentlemen. Do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, once again, really appreciate it. It's a really exciting opportunity for our city. Uh, to be involved, with, especially with the Blue Jays, they're a, a world class organization. Um, we'll uh, we'll deal with uh, the allocation of the land in item 8A, West Recreation Space, uh, and we'll have that discussion at that point because we have to have that decision for you guys for Friday. Um, so we'll make sure we get that done tonight. Um, but yeah, no, all in all, it's great. Uh, it's a great thing, and uh, having a, a lot of kids and a lot of sports and other things. I know that 11U, that 13U, that's where kids really start to drop off. So anything we can do to keep them act active, especially girls. And so that girls at bat program is, is uh, amazing. And um, I, I knew you guys were growing, but I, having seen the numbers of participants, I didn't realize you were growing quite substantially. So uh, it's nice to see that uh, we have an active community and active participation from our youth in, in our sports programs. So uh, congratulations on that. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's an exciting opportunity, and uh, hopefully uh, we can make something happen for you. Fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Thanks, it's quarter after seven. We'll uh, take a quick five and then pick it up with business item 8A, West Recreation Space. Thank you very much. Call the call our council meeting of Tuesday, January 26th, back to order, uh, which brings us to business item 8A, the West Recreation Space Update. Mr. Seward. Good evening, Your Worship and members of council. And I'd like to start off by, I heard my name thrown around a few times in the previous presentation, and I hope they were speaking well of me. I didn't catch it all. I was in and out, so. I'll it was all in a good way. Work. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, administration is bringing this back for a project update. Uh, and obviously in light of the previous presentation, we've had a very fluid situation unfold uh, based on the timelines that uh, baseball shared with you. Uh, we would like to have had this conversation earlier, but uh, just the way things go, sometimes it uh, presents itself when it presents itself. So uh, I will proceed. I've got acting director of planning and development, Joanne Darje, back me up here. The focus of the update for council this evening is mainly around um, since September 1st of 2020, when we were before council with the concepts for four diamonds and an off leash park for the West 80, council supported the concept uh, based that we come back after some public engagement, we were funded a certain amount of funds towards that project. And since that time, administration has been working on going into detailed design, which involves more engagement with the user groups who are mainly gonna use these diamonds. Um, as well as um, the off-leash folks and the developer of the Elan area structure plan. Um, that engagement was mainly to determine layout, field orientation, location in the land parcel, and the overall space. That concept, we were trying to stick around the 20 to 22 acre uh, concept for the development. The concept that is attached to the package this evening is different from what council would have seen back in September based upon the engagement and the further detail in, in an effort to try to establish diamonds that would be more flexible for Beaumont to meet the needs of play for the three different groups as well as the age and level of play. And that's why you see, I think previously it was a, it was a clover leaf 300 diamond basic shape. This further engagement has come back with two 275s, uh, diamonds, two 225s, and they're orientated to the Southwest, which is the preferred orientation when you're at the batter's box. Um, as well, um, in the final field allocation of those fields, it will be determined through Beaumont's policy. As baseball mentioned in the presentation, all the groups have been able to work well together. The whole goal of this project is to increase the inventory and those needs you know, will change over time. And as long as that process is adhered to, I think there's much more room for these groups to use going forward. Uh, their specific uh, application was centered around 
what we left as a green space in that concept that's attached there. And it would obviously fit another 225 diamond. And that was thrown in because we knew that they were working on this in the background, but we really, it had changed shapes, locations, and even intent a few times, and it landed here. And it was kind of a, a frantic last couple of weeks to get it to this point. Off leash area was also factored in location in this concept, uh, based on location to the neighboring property, ensuring that the dedication off leash space would be significantly larger than what the residents have now. The temporary large breed dog park to the east of the BSRC is a the fenced area is approximately 0.75 acres. What we're showing here is over five times larger than what we have currently. And just for some reference, St. Albert Lacombe Park, the largest off leash area St. Albert has is the same size as this, just for context, if anyone's ever been there. As also part of this further detailed engagement with our stakeholders, the developer of the Elan area structure plan is obviously a stakeholder. And I know acting director Joanne Darje will speak to that um, a little more detail just on the implications of that conversation. I know we worked with them in the last several months to, to look at where to place this in the parcel, south, north, east, west, how it could be orientated in an effort to potentially accommodate it within that area structure plan. They, pro they provided a couple of options that they would like to see, but we came back around and we've landed back at the very north end of the parcel. And the reason for that is, is, is twofold. One is it's a very visible area for safety, security, and access. Concentrating the layout in that 20, 20 acre parcel will also save money. We've, we've now shortened up a long access road that could potentially brought us into the development. That's gonna save significant dollars. And that's why we feel, oh, the last piece I was gonna mention was as that property moves to the south, it gets lower, it gets wet in the center there. And the further we can stay away from that natural wetland, it eliminates us having to deal with that wetland issue right now, where we're proposing to construct this, it's, it's fairly level at the north at the north parcel. So we'd like to stay away from that wetlands as much as possible, because um, it obviously drives the cost up from the earthworks, for example, and any environmental concerns that may be raised, we, we can stay away from that altogether. Construction timeline on the project right now, we're in February is final detailed design tendering package, hoping to tender this project in March. Administration would come back to council prior to an award uh, should we not have sufficient funds for the project. Um, the estimate that we had uh, was a very rough estimate back in September. Uh, we, we've seen now that there's a pot potential that we're gonna need some more funds for this, but we would not award any, any tender without coming back to council with that, wherever that lands. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Joanne if she can, uh, navigate the tricky uh, waters of the area structure plan conversation, just so council understands the impact of this development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suter. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so to expand on some of the engagement that we did with the developer, if you um, go to page 23 of the PowerPoint, that's um, the current concept that Mr. Suter was talking about. The dark lines on that, um, on that map show the area structure plan um, imposed on top of the concept. Um, you'll see right through the middle of the ball diamonds, the proposed area structure, or the area structure plan proposes to have, that's where the commercial node is. Um, to the south of the ball diamonds is a pro uh, proposed storm water management plan. Um, further south is where the school and MR uh, facilities are planned to be. As part of that engagement process with the developer, being that they're the largest landowner in that area, it was important for us to engage with them. This was an area structure plan that they prepared and, and proposed to develop out. Um, so we, we worked with them to see if we could fit these ball diamonds and dog park in some place within the area structure plan that would allow them to be uh, located in a more permanent location. Um, based on the constraints that Mr. Studer indicated, um, we came back to this location closest to 50th Avenue and the developer was fine with that on the proviso that these are still considered temporary. Um, thank you, Shalane, for bringing that up. 
so that these this location is still considered temporary. It does not actually fit with the proposed area structure plan. So as development occurs, um, these facilities will need to be located elsewhere. Um, the area structure plan indicates again that this area is to be a commercial node, which is a, a focal point for this development and provides for a mix of commercial, high uh, residential and uh, institutional uses. Um, so the nature of this being temporary is hard to determine. Uh, it's hard to nail down what temporary is. This is uh, phase five of their development as indicated in the area structure plan. We are currently in phase one. Uh, so development occurring in this will really be dependent on how quickly uh, the market uptake is and how quickly development does occur. Um, definitely not before 10 years, um, but it could be 20 years before this area is built out. But wanted to note um, and, and be sure that uh, this is temporary based on the current plan that we have, uh, the current area structure plan. The other reason for engaging uh, the developer is this land is currently zoned agricultural in the agriculture zone, this type of development is a discretionary use, which means that notice will go to adjacent landowners and they do have an opportunity to appeal it. Had we not engaged with uh, the landowner, that, uh, that appeal was probably likely, given that it doesn't fit with the area structure plan. Um, but we spent the time to discuss that with them and have agreed on something that works for all parties. Uh, thank you, Joanne. Um, so back to you, Your Worship, if there's any questions of Council. Um, obviously, in light of the previous presentation, there's another item to potentially discuss as part of this uh, update. So uh, yeah, we're gonna back to you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Suter and Ms. Durgy. Appreciate the update. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with, the, with how the concept changed uh, to get to where we're at. A um, little disconcerted about potential doubling of costs. Can you enlighten us on how we, on how that sort of came about? We had, Your Worship, back in uh, September when asked about the cost, we were working off the framework of approximately 350,000 per diamond, but that was, that was all we had at that time. Um, it didn't factor in parking lots, access roads, the complete earthworks for the off lease, all the fencing, all the details. So we've gone much more into detail now and we're ready to put it out, but it, we've been advised that we don't have enough funds potentially, but we don't know what that looks like exactly right now. So uh, okay. I recommend we come back once we, we see where we land. And so taking, taking that in mind, we did a fairly minimalist design. Like I see a lot of trees that don't necessarily need to be there from a cost perspective. On, currently on the drawing. Correct. There, there's ways that we could uh, potentially look at that, um, depending on where we uh, where we land with the uh, the pricing on the tender. Okay, appreciate that. I'll open it up to questions from members of council. But yeah, one of the decisions that council is going to have to make tonight is whether or not uh, we're, we 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 can support supplying the letter that we will definitely allocate that future program area for the Blue Jays Diamond. Um, Councilor Van Newkirk, followed by Councilor Monkoff Swain. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, a few topics to discuss tonight on this one for sure, as you identified. But I wanted to start at the uh, the word temporary. Um, that's fairly disconcerting. That has caught the attention of residents that have reviewed this document as well. And um, I think the the timeline here on page 15, it says urban development is not likely to occur for more than 10 years, depending on market demands. So that's a fairly safe number, I would say. But, uh, you know, what say you to building this out and then having to demolish it and move it somewhere else in eight years? Um, you know, is that the best use of funds, uh, you know, moving forward? 
The one, the one question I have is, you know, when we went to build out the public works building, did we say that was a temporary project? Because in time, the public works building, you know, will likely be moved and likely residential or, or commercial will go over that property, right? Like, was that advertised as such? Um, you know, any of the other structures, you know, the house I live in is a temporary structure too, right? Um, you know, one day it'll be knocked down and and something else would be put up. So um, just maybe talk to me about um, the word temporary. Uh, I understand why it's there, but talk to me about the messaging on that, please. I'll, um, I'll try to answer that. I'm not sure if I quite understand the question because um, everything, I guess, as you stated, um, everything could be viewed as temporary. In this particular instance, because we have an area structure plan, an approved council statutory plan that indicates how development is to occur, um, this development, uh, the development of this site as recreational in this manner, uh, doesn't fit with that plan. So it, it has to be temporary based on that plan. Could the plan change? Yes. Um, could there be um, other things that happen that allow that to stay? For sure. Um, however, according to the plan that is currently approved and in place, this development has to be considered temporary. For sure, yeah, and, and I get that. Um, I guess, um, Mayor, can I ask a follow up? Sure, Ed. Yeah, um, maybe talk me through the benefits of Beaumont owning this land. Um, you know, Beaumont owns this 80 acres, we've approved an ASP, now we're being, you know, and, and I understand how this all goes, but now we're being hamstrung and, um, you know, by the ASP to use the land more long term in a way that would best, rep, best right now benefit the residents. Um, are you able to speak to that? So the land, uh, the, the full 80 acres um, can be used as a positional um, piece as well. So the fact that we're now looking to develop it or a portion of it, um, the land could be swapped with a developer um, for an, a piece of uh, municipal reserve at another point in time um, because it's got a commercial node in it. Um, it's more marketable in that location. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities that may have been discussed when the land was initially purchased. I don't know that the initial intention was to develop it into this type of facility originally. Miss, maybe Mr. Schwartz can add a bit more information on that. You know, I, I think you covered it off very well, Joanne. There, there are a number of possibilities, but you're right. There, there is an ASP. The, the timeline of temporary is really hard to, uh, hard to determine. Yeah, that's right. And I think you keyed on uh, where I was going, uh, Ms. Darji, and that is in the, you know, the potential land swap. So the, you know, the, you know, the way to, the way to do this in the future would be to relocate this into an area that fits with the ASP and, but, but it's going to take some effort to negotiate that, right? Um, have you talked to the developer proactively around how that might look based upon the approved ASP? What are the options uh, for, you know, when this, temporary piece of land uh, comes calling for the for the node. Um, you know, has there any been any discussion about where this might go after the fact? So those discussions haven't occurred yet. Those are quite far uh, a number of years down the road. Um, so as indicated, they're just in their first phase of development. The area that this 80 acres is situated in is in their fifth phase. Um, they had the area structure plan, I believe, uh, was approved in 2018, um, and they're just looking to do some development, actual groundbreaking this year. So it, it is a number of years away before uh, any of those types of discussions would probably even occur. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and kind of where I wanted to leave this thought train for myself, it, you know, with, with, with council and, and the listening and watching public is, you know, the, the opportunity here in the future is in uh, working with the developer to relocate what's there and the monetary aspects of all of that will have to be worked out in the future. Um, you know, a great use of this land right now for Beaumont is the project that's in front of us. So that's where I'll leave it for now and uh, happy to jump in on some other discussions that are likely going to pop up, Mayor. Thank you. 
Yeah, no, and just to, to throw a comment on, on the end of this, as a loan, as, as the landowner, um, development occurs at the pace we want it to. So we don't, just because it's in phase five of the ASP, if we're not right, if we're not, if we haven't found a suitable relocation or funding for suitable relocation, we don't have to, to go with that plan. I mean, we, we own it. That's our decision to develop it or not uh, and how it gets developed as just like any other landowner within the ASP area. Councilor Magas Swain. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, and, and thanks for the presentation and the update. Um, I'll say I, I was uh, surprised by the, the timeline information on this, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I, I do appreciate you coming back and, and checking back in with council. Maybe let me start off by saying um, that the need uh, to develop this space is clear. Um, and just want to remind folks uh, here and, and listening that a key reason for this is because we, we approved a new uh, multi-use uh, football field um, and where we're going to lose two diamonds. So we need to, we need to catch that up uh, at, at a very minimum. So I um, just want to highlight that. Um, I, I'm going to go through systematically a couple of things here. Um, Ms. Winter, I wonder if you could just take us to page 16, please. Um, so just one below under next steps. Uh, and I just want to check the language here because I think there is a word wrong and it does make, it makes about a $1.2 million difference. So I want to make sure I, I get it right here. Um, under next steps, and, and maybe you could zoom in, sorry, I to, to ask you to do this, but under next steps, um, the, the Thank you. The, the paragraph of the, um, the sentence starting, administration has received a revised estimate that is higher than the originally estimated by approximately $1.2 million. So I, I'm hoping that there is a, a, a word uh, change there. Um, so I, when we originally uh, approved this, it was at $1.2 million. The way that that reads is that there is a higher estimate of about $1.2 million. So if I were to do that, that's you're looking at $2.4 million. I'm assuming that what you're saying here is that there is gonna be a higher estimate than the originally anticipated 1.2 million. Is that, is that a fair statement? I can answer, try to answer that, Your Worship, through to Councilor Markov Swain. Yes, it is going to be higher than the original estimate of 1.2. And that, that was obviously too low based on what we're seeing now from an estimate from the designer. Um, where it lands could, will depend on a lot of decisions that we make during detailed design as far as uh, what we want to see right away, what we can push off later. And we'll put it out for tender and we'll see where we land. But it will be higher than 1.2. That's what they're telling us. Yes. Yeah, and, and, I, and I get that. But the way that this reads, um, Mr. Suter, is that um, administration has received a revised estimate that is higher by $1.2 million. So just, it, it's, it, it's an important technicality. So basically what you're saying is that this is gonna cost us more. We don't, know, we don't know how much more until we go out to tender. It's not gonna be, it might not be $1.2 million. Um, just that, that nuance is important. Yes, we're understanding that it could be as high as $1.2 million more potentially. Okay, so that is the 2.4 number. Okay, thank you. Um, can, can we just take a quick look, um, next question, uh, page 21, please, Ms. Winter. So this is our overall concept for, for the ELAN area structure plan, so th thanks for including this in. And you can see the area site uh, in blue there. Um, and really the reason why we're putting these facilities here uh, is because we own the land. Um, and you can see just south of, uh, in the southern half of that, um, you've got that, that green kind of uh, polygon, for lack of a better term, for municipal reserve. So um, I just wanted to, to point that out, and, and Council Van Newkirk went down a, a good conversation and got some good information back from the administration, saying that ultimately, um, you know, we own the land, and um, there is potential for land swaps, and there is potential for negotiation, and, and if this uh, if it did come to the fact that they wanted to build that commercial node, uh, the property value there would be significantly greater than, um, than potentially somewhere else where we're just looking at municipal reserves. So uh, it's not like uh, if, for example, we had the, the dog park there and we had to potentially move it further south. I know they say school site, potential school site there, but we're, they're all over at Beaumont right now with those S's. So the, the fact that there is at, at, at an ASP approved level, there is a significant amount of municipal reserve just south of the 80 acres. So I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, 
if we go back to the um, to the original uh, uh, overview map, I think it's 23, sorry, showing this winter. Maybe what I'll, what I'll quickly touch on here is, you know, whether it's 10 years, whether it's 15, 20 years down the road, we're, we've heard tonight and quite frankly, over the last three and a half years <laughs> on the job for me anyway, is that we've got this urgent need now. Um, and, you know, this is, this is something that we absolutely need to look for. Um, for, the, for those, uh, particularly for the, for the diamonds, I'll talk about the dog park in a second. To answer the question, I, I do agree um, and, and, and like where um, uh, Boma Minor Ball is, is going with that future program here. I'm happy to, to allocate that. We'll talk about the implications of that in a second. Um, but you know, that, that put on a hell of a lot of effort and we need to come to the table and, and provide that, that, that space that, that is there. So in short, for me, um, obviously you're going to come back to us with uh, with a revised cost, and we need to find out uh, where we're going to fund that from. Uh, but quite frankly, um, you know, from a project perspective, um, this is an absolute crucial need. We've seen that in the, uh, the recreation culture master plan that was sent out about the need for ball diamonds, uh, multiple comments around how many diamonds we've lost. So uh, this is a no brainer. Let's get those costs back into us as soon as possible. Um, so my, my next question is just around timing. Um, you, you mentioned, um, you know, I guess where, where I'm struggling with this or the frustration from, from my perspective is we, we brought this, we had an, uh, a special council meeting back in September because we wanted to take advantage of uh, potentially the fall construction season um, to, to be able to get this because we wanted these ready to go. We heard the need for, for these diamonds and yet here we are in January. Now we're looking at going to tender in, in March. So, uh, and, I, and I understand now that the background as you, as administration went out to try and find that more permanent location and did that uh, engo engagement detailed design. And I appreciate that that work went on. Now they've come back, now you're coming back and saying, this is the, the best location for it. Um, so the, the, the detailed design work and, and going out to tender in, in March, I guess I'm curious, do we lose the whole month of February? Explain the timing around that. Once the tender comes back in, the decision comes in front of council when, when can we look to get this in the, um, when, when can we look to get shovels in the ground? Uh, through your worship, Council Markov Swing. I'm just being conservative on that timeline. Obviously, we would want to get that back in, in front of Council as quick as possible once we have that. So maybe I'll ask a more direct question. Why are we waiting until March? We're we'll going home month of February. Why isn't it going out to, if we, depending on the discussion tonight, obviously, but um, yeah, I think timing is, we, we brought this forward in September for a reason. So um, I'll, I'll leave that with you, um, but you know, we, you can hear the urgency from, from council as well as the, the public on the need to, to progress with this. Um, so your worship, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll switch gears to the, to the off-leash park. Okay. Um, so first of all, um, you know, we, we've heard from the, um, from the ball folks tonight, um, and, and just want to reiterate that that many of us have heard from the off leash park uh, folks as well, and not not tonight obviously, but but throughout um, the many years that, that we've been on, um, been through this process. So I, I'm glad that we found a, a spot here for this uh, for this off leash park. Um, I guess that the challenge that I have with it is um, uh, is uh, just in terms of the size of it. When, when I look at this. Um, you know, we have 80 acres and I, I recognize the, um, you know, the, the orange dollar polygon there that you want us, us to stay out of. But why, why wouldn't we, um, you know, for the sake of, uh, of, uh, of fencing, that, that area needed to be fenced anyway. For the sake of some fencing, why wouldn't we bring that, that off-leash off -leash park? Um, and I recognize it's more than just fencing, but why wouldn't we bring that off-leash park south further um, to, towards the, that, uh, that orange dotted line? And then head a, have a, um, a horizontal line going going east west and really open up that space and you know that 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 brings into into play that you know that 20 acre parcel um, at at least for, for that off leash um, area that the land isn't being used um, you know we we own it so why wouldn't we expand it so I'm just curious about why it would be limit why why you limited the proposal back to four acres when we've got all that um, that huge amount of land that, that could be expanded. We could have a nice L shape um, uh, off leash area for, for at least 20 years. Uh, Councilor McCoswin, it's really just around cost. We were trying to stick to the earthworks involved in the 20 acre parcel, and, and that's what, that, what you see before you. 
Uh, obviously, you can add on. It's just a matter of cost. It's more than just fencing. There's a significant amount of earthwork that has to go on. And sodding, if you want to use it right away, you have to sod, get on there. And you have to seed. You can't get on for quite a while. Um, and if you're going to add trail amenities in there, whatever else you're going to add. So to answer your question, it's really just a, a cost decision. For, for, for me personally, I would like to see those numbers. Um, you know, where and, and what I'm wanting not to do here is to, to compare it to other projects. <laughs> um, but, but just for, for some uh, an analysis, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at, at 5 million plus for that, for that multi-use field, and, and that's great. Um, the, the amount of dog, uh, dog owners in, in this area and, and the fact that they've been, um, been screaming for this for, for many, many years, um, I, I would like to understand um, what, what the cost implications are. Um, so when, when, we, um, you know, when we go out to tender, I, I would like to get an understanding. It, it's not, um, it doesn't take that much work to ask, you know, provide that, that secondary option of, of what that L shape would, would look like. Um, again, avoiding that future program area, but bringing it further south and then across uh, east west so personally I, I would like to see that um you know that there is uh, i get we need to looking at earthworks and you know while we've got the equipment out there let's use it um but sod and all that sort of stuff you know that that could potentially be a, a phase two if, if needed i just want to do it right the first time um and uh I'm curious if uh, if administration had any any thought around that or is there any any concern and I don't, I don't know whether we need to vote on that your worship or not but um that, that would be my suggestion anyway to make sure that that off-leash park is larger than that four acres it is going to take a motion but uh ceo yeah that's what, what i was seeking was clarity uh we've got one counselor offering uh kind of a, a description of what he that person's looking like but i we need some direction from council if we want to explore changing the scope of this project and, 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 and what that yeah. is yeah, to be clear, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let the rest of folks um, um, uh, provide, provide their comments and ask questions. And at the end, I will, I'll, I'll make that motion and, and it'll, it'll be to bring back uh, cost options for, for both. Um, so just to, to plant that in people's minds. So uh, whether that gets up or down, we'll find out. But uh, that, that's kind of the, the thought process there. So but all in all, I'm super excited about this. Uh, this is absolutely needed for, for Beaumont. Uh, incredible opportunity with that future program area. Um, first and foremost, let's get those four diamonds uh, built and, and, and get some uh, a space for our, our dog owners to, to use out there. So great work, Paul, to, to get it to the stage and looking forward to uh, seeing uh, some work out there um, in the near future. Thank you. Okay, we got uh, speaking order up is Councillor Hendricks, followed by Councillor Danlock, followed by Councillor Barnhart. And that'll sort of close out round one. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, just a comment uh, regarding the lands and certainly uh, kudos to the previous council for uh, couldn't hit a better bullseye in terms of where to put and where to purchase in terms of this uh, area structure plan. Uh, and, and I say that because of the performer that should also be shown as part of this discussion. Yes, we're showing the cost side, but we're not showing, as they say in real estate, the lift side. So uh, the 80 acres over time will continue to uh, improve in value um, if we've got a commercial node sitting right under our feet, that's fantastic. Um, so the valuation over time will, will uh, certainly, I would think, offset any of the costs that we're currently looking at. The other thing is that if we do, in fact, have to get up and move, uh, we'll have some say in that. And uh, so we have a placeholder now in terms of a potential swap because we do, in fact, own the land. So we're well positioned. And the other thing is that if you do move, uh, it's not that the asset just stays and gets demolished. There's, there's a lot of that asset that gets to get picked up and moved and, and, and re repositioned. And the fact that uh, that site will then, by that time, will have uh, full servicing uh, to it, uh, by other, paid by others. And, and uh, not to mention the road upgrades and all the rest. Uh, it'll be, uh, again, very significant in the uh, valuation of, of the property. So, so I think uh, the 80 acres is well positioned. Uh, I think there'll be uh, certainly an upside, not a downside if we have to move. And it's certainly a, a great bargaining tool uh, if we have to have another placeholder for another location. So, so thank you. Councilor Danlock. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. Um, I echo some of my colleagues' previous comments. 
Uh, I'm very excited about this entire project. Uh, it's well, well, very well needed. As we all are very much aware, we need to proceed as best we possibly can. I, I must admit, though, when I first saw the the uh, RFD, uh, Mr. Suter, uh, I do. We had a conversation briefly. Um, the temporary ten-year thing kind of got a bit of a loop initially. But the more I've thought about the last couple of days, um, this area structure plan was approved in 2017, uh, early 2018. We're now in 2021. The developer is working at phase one on the very north end of the area structure plan. There's very little going on right now. So I think optimistically, by the time they come south to where this is located, I think 10 years is extremely optimistic. It's closer to probably 15 or 20 years from now. And I'm confident that we can work out some kind of a solution uh, in the future for relocating if we have to. But in the very worst scenario, we've, a, we've had an opportunity to have four, yeah. possibly five. And I, I like the idea of the fifth diamond, if we can make it work. Um, to have four to five good quality diamonds for our citizens and their families to use for the next 15 to 20 years. Um, I think we, the initial timeline when saying temporary kind of got me a little bit off center, but now I'm more thinking about it. I'm confident we've got a, at least a 15, 20 year horizon on these diamonds before any kind of serious threat to them having to move them is any, anything coming forward. So I'm in favor of proceeding. Uh, I'd like to see us work in the fifth diamond if we possibly can. And, and go from there. So that's my first initial comments. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. Okay, appreciate that. Councilor Barnhart. Thank you, Mayor. And, and thank you to everybody because the question's really helping me uh, understand this better. Uh, question from Mr. Ms. No, Ms. <laughs> Darji. Sorry, there's a lot of people on my screen right now. Uh, Ms. Darji, just wondering if you could just give me a, a, a little more comfort that when you spoke to the developers and the, the folks that have developed the, um, the ASP with us, that, uh, that, that they are not um, overly perplexed by this one and that that's not gonna slow them down in terms of their development. Are there any real negative impacts to them uh, that we should be aware of before we go ahead and approve this? Thank you, Your Worship, through to Councillor Barnhart. Um, in our discussions with the developer, they were actually very excited about this development. They thought that it would benefit their current area that they're developing. Um, and they, they were really uh, very accommodating and working with us to try and find the best location to, to put this. Um, there was a lot, lots of discussion as to who could help, how we could help each other with this. Um, at the end, when we decided that this was actually the best location uh, based on the timing as well, um, they were very supportive of it. Their only proviso was that we do sign this as temporary and put uh, in an indication of what the area structure plan for that area is to look like. So that that's not forgotten, uh, whether it's 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the road, uh, that that's not forgotten. That was their only condition then. That was the only condition, yeah. That, that, that's great, I, that, gives, that gives me more comfort. Um, and the second part, uh, the second question on my mind is around the cost. Um, Mr. Souter, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm kind of blown away that the estimate was off by 100%. You know, and that, that just seems to me that we have, uh, so, something was really off there. Can, can you give me some idea of what was really different when you got back the estimate? I don't know where, Councilor Barnard, the original estimate came from. I believe it was attached to the capital project in 2020 of 350000 for a diamond in Milieu, yeah. a colonial. And I think it was just a simple math, 350 times four is where that initial on the fly estimate was provided. Once this has gone back to our designer, our architect, they're getting us more detailed cost, and that's where we're being cautious that you know we were way under on that number when you look at the the access road the overall earthworks all the fencing the parking lot the gravel everything that comes into that is more than just fence and grass so I think that's perhaps where it went a little low there at the beginning with, but that's my best answer at this point makes makes sense get the 350,000 is definitely what I recall and and I just wanted to um, clarify with you when when we're looking at that fifth diamond and the potential for the, the grant and the cost or the amount of the grant, that would not include the earthwork or any of the other preparatory work that's necessary. The city would be picking that up. 
Is that is that your understanding? Uh, potentially, Councilor Barnhart, that was uh, that Earthworks would have been planned to do that as just an open space as part of this development, or potentially off leash, depending on whatever the need would be. Um, rather than making an awkward space, it was just going to be as part of the, the overall development. The Earthworks would be included. So yes, so if that uh, grant was to come ahead, that would be ready, if you will, for their contribution at that point. So the, the cost of the diamond is what's on top of that prepared ground, not um, all the cost. If we divided a, that land and the development by four diamonds, we're not gonna get an equal amount of money for their diamond because part of that cost is already gonna be covered. Does that make any sense what I just said? <laughs> it did to me. I, I believe I followed you. I think their grant would, would then cover costs, for example, of the grass, uh, the shale, the fencing, the dugouts, whatever it is they're gonna spec out in that diamond. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I am concerned about the cost. So I, I, uh, I'll wait and see what others are thinking around that. Okay, so in an effort to move this along, um, we don't have, we're not, we're not debating tonight whether we're gonna kill this project uh, or have it go ahead. We're, administration is gonna put it out to tender uh, and then bring it back. And then we can have a greater discussion around whether or not we can find the funds to, to build it. And I think support from councils there to move this project ahead and get it going. Um, but we've, we've already approved this project. It's already going forward. Um, the next step is to complete the design and send it back and then get the cost and bring it back to us so that we can, we can have a more informed discussion on it. So I don't think we need to, to beat that dead horse anymore tonight. Um, Councillor Munkoff Swain has a motion he wants to make about perhaps getting an add-on cost. Um, to get a second part of the dog park and have to make a motion as to whether or not we're going to put the land towards uh, the future fifth diamond. And so those are the two things on my agenda. And so we'll open it up for Councillor Munkoff Swain to make his motion. And then we'll have discussion on that. We'll make the third motion and then final closing comments. Sound like a plan? Yeah, Councillor Munkoff Swain. Thanks, Your Worship, and, and I just, uh, we kind of went around the Hornet Council staff didn't, didn't jump in, so I, I'm, I'm happy to hold the motion, or if you wanted to, to move forward, that, um, I'll, I'll leave that to you, but I just see his hand. All right, I didn't see Councillor, yeah, he didn't, Councillor Stout, you have, oh, my bad, I was in round it. one. Um, yeah, just one quick question. Um, just comparing the original concept with the revised concept, um, so we've gone from four 300 foot diamonds for reasons that have already been discussed, I think. Um, off Leash Park was shown as four, five or six acres and it's, it's now designated at four. And then the parking lot was 261 stalls and now we're at 212. Um, is that gonna be enough parking? If we, if we needed 261 before, why do we only need 212 now? Mr. Dargy, Mr. Shooter. I, I don't have an answer for that, Councillor Stout, and that's just what's provided by the architect. Okay. So we, as far as we know, then that will be an, an adequate amount of parking for the facilities that are proposed there. I would have to defer to him as the expert in these sort of sports field designs. That That is correct, yes. The, is, there a, um, is there a land use bylaw requirement as to how much parking we have for these facilities, Ms. Daji? There is, and this significantly exceeds what our minimum is required for this. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to say at this point. All right, sorry, Councillor Soap. Um, all right, Councillor Mike Swain, you got a motion in mind. Yeah, and, and help me along here, but I think that the, the draft motion is to direct administration to provide a letter of support um, in the Beaumont minor baseball association application for the blue jays field of dreams grant yeah yeah we can do that one first i was going to do that second i was thinking the dog park one but yeah throw that one out there is that maybe i'll <laughs> shalane uh, sorry miss winter help, help me uh is that good enough for what you're looking for thank you worship through you to councillor monkoff swing yeah that motion sits fine with me so we'll open it up for discussion on the motion. And because we have a lot of hands up, I'm just gonna ask Ms. Winter to clear them and then we'll 
people will just bubble. we'll open it up for discussion on the motion again. All right, so discussion on the motion, hands up. Councillor Van Newkirk. Yeah, sorry. Um, Councillor Mokoff Swain's mic cut off or something for me. Um, was there a comment on timing on that motion? Uh, did we need to get a comment on timing on there? My internet went choppy as he was speaking. Sorry. It's in the chat box. It's direct administration to provide a letter of support to the Beaumont Minor Baseball Association application for the Blue Jays Field of Dreams grant. Okay, and it's do, due by Friday. So, do we need to add a timing comment onto that motion? I don't think so. Everybody's well aware of what the yeah. timing is. There isn't, there isn't one there. I, I assume that we all heard that I need it by Friday. Um, and I think I see Mike nodding up and down. So uh, if you want extra emphasis, uh, Councillor, uh, I'm happy for a friendly amendment, but I, I, think, I think we're okay. No, so long as everyone's aware, that's great. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? All right. Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. That carries unanimously. And uh, motion on uh, an added added scope cost to the to the dog park. Councilman Gosling. So now I'm really going off the fly to draft the motion, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, uh, so to direct administration to tender costs for both the op the 22.8 acre option. Um, presented tonight, uh, as well as an expanded off-leash park to the south of the proposed area. <laughs> Does that make sense? Approximately how big, Councilor Montcalm-Swain? Call it six acres, eight acres. That gets us to 10 or 12. Yeah, and I'm the last person to try to look at a map and, and guess the, the acres, but um, basically we want to we want to come down, uh, have a look at coming down to to the essentially to that um, that dotted line and, and heading west across there. So I, I'm not even going to guess at how many acres that is. Um, I can draw you a map. Sorry, Councillor, it's approximately eight acres. I think what you're alluding to. Yeah, okay. just I'll, I'll try to help you out, Councillor Mungas Wayne. Let, let's do. go. Let's. Come, come a decent couple hundred feet down and go the width of the uh, width of the, the current proposal. So the, the, the motion then would be to direct administration to tender costs for both the option presented um, for the 22 acres, uh, as well as an expanded uh, eight acre off leash park to the south. Yeah, so it would come back as a separate cost. Yeah, so basically I just want two you. costs. Show us, show us what you got. Um, and we'll, we'll go up or down on, on, on that information based on, on what's brought back. So, so, so really to simplify this, we're going to bring back that other tender. We can just bring back an additional estimate for an enlarged dog park by approximately eight acres. Yes, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> as long, okay. I'm not sure we've worded it correctly, but yes, CAO, that's what, that's what we want. <laughs> we'll just let Swain catch up to us. Thank you. Uh, I just want to confirm because there was a lot flying through. So that a council directed me administration to tender the cost of the options presented for the 20.8 acres and expand the off leash park area um, by an ex, uh, extended eight acres. That'll work. That'll work. We just want to know what the separate cost is. So the four acres that's currently in the proposal should come back as part of the, the cost and then the extra eight should come back as a separate add-on. Just for clarity. Can, if I can speak to it just very, very briefly, I, I won't reiterate the comments that I made earlier, um, but I, I hope we can, can look at, um, you know, what, what those costs are so that we can come back and, and potentially look at phasing it. If we're gonna do the earthworks, we might as well do it all now. If it means that, you know, the sod is, is that, much, that expensive, um, and the trees and, and, and the, the trail and all that sort of stuff, then we can, again, we can phase that. I'm sure there's opportunities for fundraising, et cetera. So um, just, just like to get a better sense and we might as well use the land. It's just gonna sit there. I'd hate to look over the fence um, and uh, wonder wh why we didn't uh, think about that. So that, that's the, the premise of that. Uh, thanks for allowing the motion, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Nellick, discussion on the motion? 
You're on mute, Councillor. Sorry, I apologize. I hit the button, but I guess it didn't click open. Sorry, apologize for that. I, I intend to support the motion in front of us now on the expanded costing. I guess my only thoughts may be, you know, we are looking forward to supporting the uh, Blue Jays Diamond application, but it seemed to be a very tight tight line. They'll be getting back pretty quickly, knowing if they've been successful on the grant or not by the sounds of it. So I'm assuming then if they do not get the grant for the Blue Jays Diamond, we're looking, going back to, uh, the attachment one, which is concept four, which already has uh, in it four, five, or six acre uh, dog park already as part of the design. So I'm, gonna, I'm assuming we won't have enough money to do a fifth diamond on our own. Uh, the fifth diamond is going to be funded primarily by the Blue Jays and the Beaumont Minor Baseball Association with some money from us in terms of land, but the actual cost, so if they don't get the grant, the fifth diamond goes away in, in my mind based on our discussions earlier, which means concept four, attachment one, does have expanded dog park already there. So just well, to boot for counselor, thought. Just, just to keep you on track, Councillor, what's going out for the detailed design is, is on page 23, attachment three. Those four diamonds, program space, and that fifth diamond, you're right, will come in whether or not the, not the, uh, the, the grant comes in and we'll have to decide about the fifth diamond if there's shortfalls later. Seeing no further discussion, go, Councillor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you. Um, I s intend to support the motion as well. I think it's uh, prudent to, to gather that cost. Um, I just wanted to ask once more about timing and uh, uh, Councillor Monkoff Swain talked about timing at length already, but um, I, I, we'd be remiss not to point out that, you know, th this has been with administration for quite some time um, and we appreciate how we got here, but we, you know, the conversation has been that um, if and when the turf field goes and two diamonds are uh, removed, that we wanted to make sure that we had other diamonds available in the west, uh, in the west area here to make sure that that shortfall is uh, not there. Um, so, you know, that that's still my intent. Um, you know, uh, I hope that administration can give us some um, certainty around that. And I know that's a, a difficult word, but, um, you know, the intent from council and the message from council since these projects were linked was that. So um, can administration speak to that a bit? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, make an effort there, Councillor. Um, we are very much aware of that. We are having ongoing discussions with the groups. It'll all be, uh, we're looking at ways to accommodate everybody as best we can. Be, uh, the reality is though, if we want to push these projects through, we're going to have to do all this quickly this year. Uh, we don't want to drag this out if we don't have to. Obviously, weather is the, the biggest factor in all of this stuff. But yes, very much on the forefront, how to best accommodate our groups so everybody can play, assuming they can play uh, in a normal year, for example. So that's the best I can answer that question at this time. Yeah, there's lots of play and, and I know that, right? But just, you know, we'd be remiss not to just remind the intent from council. So thank you. Okay, Councillor Marcos, we need to close and then we're going to call the question. All right, I, I, I had one speaking out that I forgot to mention tonight. Um, and not, not for tonight, but for, for future when, when this is presented back to us with the cost. I'd, I'd be curious um, to get an update on the on the animal control um, safety side of things uh, around this. I just, where, where Beaumont is going, I, I um, just get a bit of an update on that. Uh, I hope we don't need a motion to speak to that. So maybe I'll just generally ask um, just from a safety perspective, when, when this is brought back in front of us from a cost, uh, how do we look at that? Um, how do we use our own animal control? Um, what, what, that, what that process is, is part of the, the overall package. Um, we talked a lot about safety and the reason for bringing it forward close to Township 505 there. Um, what with that expanded piece, what would that mean? Uh, but also just around animal control. So um, if, if that's too um, confusing for, for this motion, then, then I can, um, maybe I'll tee that up for a, a council inquiry another night. Um, so maybe I'll go that route. But I just I wanted, I wanted yeah. to get that point across that I, I'd like to know a bit more about that. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. That's not, yeah, it's kind of, it's a separate topic to this motion. So we'll tee it up for a council inquiry for a second night. Administration's now on the radar. All right, so call the question. All in favor of getting the added separate cost? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, carries unanimously. Uh, which, thank you very much, Mr. Shooter. It was a great presentation.
Um, looking forward to the, seeing the next steps in this project as it moves forward. It's very exciting. Uh, which brings us to bylaw. Bylaws 9A, bylaw 997-21, temporary face covering bylaw, first, second, and third. Good evening, Your Worship. Members of Council, it's a pleasure to be with you here this evening. I am good to start, Your Worship. Yep, go ahead. Where's Your Worship? Excellent. Thank you so very much. Uh, again, good evening, uh, Your Worship, members of Council. Uh, administration is before you. This evening, seeking first, second, and third reading for bylaw 997-21, our temporary face covering bylaw. This bylaw, which may be viewed as a continuation of Beaumont's existing face covering bylaw 984-20, provides specific modifications as requested by Beaumont's Committee of the Whole. On December 15th, 2020, administration met with the committee and received direction to amend Beaumont's temporary face covering bylaw as follows. One, to extend the expiry date of the bylaw to December 1st, 2021. Two, to add an additional, an additional rescinding mechanism of zero active cases of COVID-19 in Beaumont. And three, to return to council with a recommendation of adding a metric to the zero case count of either 14 or 28 days that Beaumont would be required to remain case-free prior to triggering the bylaw to automatically rescind. Administration is recommending a period of 14 days be used in conjunction with reaching zero active cases of COVID-19 as outlined in section 8B of the proposed bylaw. In the early stages of the pandemic, Beaumont was fortunate to not register any active cases of COVID-19 until the time, about the time that our face covering bylaw first came into force. And it was after this time that Beaumont witnessed a significant increase in active cases, escalating the city to a case rate of 355 per 100,000 people. It was at this, also at this time that Beaumont led the province in, in the case count per 100,000. Since its peak last November, Beaumont's active case rate has steadily decreased to 129.1 cases per 100,000. As, as of just this afternoon, and as provided by the province of Alberta, Beaumont has had a total of 509 cases of COVID-19 with 31 being active, 464 residents have recovered and 14 deaths had, have occurred locally as a result of this pandemic. Today, the, uh, today Alberta remains under an enhanced status uh, province-wide, uh, keeping restrictions in place to help slow the spread of COVID-19. And of course, this includes the wearing of mandatory face coverings. In efforts to understand the direction that other regional municipalities have taken, administration conducted an environmental scan of rescinding mechanisms in other face covering bylaws used throughout the region. The scan reflected in table one of the R is reflected, sorry, in table one of the RFD before council. Of the nine municipalities listed, two are using 30 days as a rescinding mechanism while one uses 14 days. Further, and to aid in determining an appropriate timeline of remaining case-free, administration visited World Health Organization and federal and provincial government sites where no de definitive amount of time could be determined other than the realization that by allowing more time to pass, the, ch the chance of reinstating the bylaw shortly after rescinding causing confusion for residents may be avoided. Although some research and regional trends may support remaining case-free longer, administration has proposed to council a 14 day timeline to remain active case free for the use in the proposed bylaw. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, appreciate that. Is there a member of council willing to move first reading tonight? Councillor Stout. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so we'll open it up to questions and comments from members of council. Um, because we're doing second and third, the proper time to make amending motions and stuff is as we get first to first first reading. We'll get it on the get it on the get it on the order process. Once first reading is passed, we can make amendments and other other items before we proceed to second and third reading, if that's the will of council. Okay. Discussion on the motion for, for discussion on the motion for first reading. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Okay, so before we move to second reading, is there member, members of council wish to make amendments to the document as presented? 
Because if not, I got one. Councilor Danilak. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Director Cook, for your presentation and the information was very, very helpful. Um, I stated previously my, my thought pattern, I'm leaning towards uh, a 28 day uh, COVID free window as opposed to 14. I'm just very concerned of the yo-yo effect that may happen if we rescind the bylaw, get some cases, reinstate the bylaw again, and then 14 days goes by or a month goes by and 14 days we're case free and rescind up and down. I think 28 days gives us much less opportunity to have a yo-yo effect if you want, if I lack a way, a better way of putting it to have less opportunity to rescind the bylaw and then put it back in again and confuse our citizens with, uh, with that kind of messaging and makes communications for our citizens difficult. Um, I understand so 14 days uh, is something on the World Health Organization site and Federal Government of Canada, but I'm just, I'm more cautious in terms of the communication uh, to our citizens and consistency for our citizens, uh, as well as, um, less confusion for everybody. So I'm leaning towards uh, the 28 day. I'm not prepared to make a motion just yet. I want to see if any other councillors have concerns. Um, I'd rather vote, vote for 28 first. If it doesn't get passed, that's okay. And then 14 is on the table, but it's hard to go from 14 once you've passed it to go to 28. So I prefer to have the discussion now and see how my fellow councillors feel about 28. Thank you. Okay, hang on. I mean, I had a small procedural error. We got to get second on and then we can amend it at second. So is there a member of council willing to move second reading? Councilor Barnhart. All in favor? Sorry, discussion on the motion and amendments to be made. <laughs> second reading is on the floor. Back to Councilor Alex, you're not prepared to make a, quick, make a motion yet. Not yet. Mayor Stewart, okay. thank you. I want to see how my colleagues feel about it and, and if there's uh, some consensus, I may just do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we get into that discussion, then I'm going to broach the topic of perhaps it's time to let this bylaw expire. Uh, if council will remember, will remember back when we first got into this, back in, in August, we brought this bylaw into effect when the province wasn't going to bring a mass mandate. We are currently under a mass mandate that's currently by the province. And so it's mostly the same as ours, but largely different. And our bylaw, quite frankly, gets superseded by the provincial mass mandate. Now that the province has stepped up and put the mass mandate in place, um, I think it's time to step out of the game and let the province in, and let the province handle it, and we'll follow their follow their follow their logic. Um, this isn't without precedent. Grand Prairie did the same thing today. They allowed their mass bylaw to to expire in favor of the provincial mandate. Um, and there's nothing to say that if the provincial mandate expires and we still need masks, that we can't bring a bylaw back. Um, at the very least today, if this passes, I I'm going to throw another motion out there to have it suspended while the provincial mandate is in place. But um, open it up for question. Open it up for comments. I'm going to move that we allow. I'm going to move that uh, we. Uh, I'm going to speak against second reading, I guess, so that the, this bylaw then fails and expires naturally, uh, in favor of the provincial mandates. Councillor Mikoff Swain. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. And uh, I was actually um, thinking along the same lines. So um, um, I'm interested in where this discussion goes. And you're right, the, the reason why we put the bylaw in place is because the province wasn't, they weren't stepping up. Um, the, the whole time it, it felt awkward, um, given the fact that we don't have those medical experts uh, at our whim, that, that you know, we don't have that advice coming directly to us. We're, we're looking at the, at the province. Um, now they've got that, that mask uh, bylaw in place, the, the challenge, I guess, the, the risk with rescinding it is, do we trust the province? Um, and clearly we did it before, which is why we put it in. Um, but ultimately, I, I, I agree. I think it is time to, to rescind this one, let the province take it over. And, and if, uh, if uh, they, they take it out, um, you know, potentially against the advice of, of medical professionals, then, then we, we would look back at it. But I um, I, I agree that let's let's make it easier for our residents. We just follow the one uh, provincial legislation. So uh, I uh, um, I'm actually in support of, of where you're going with this, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Van Newkirk. 
Yeah, thank you, Worship, for putting it forward. Um, that's where my head was at tonight, too, um, for all the reasons that Councillor Monkoff Swain just said. And, you know, in absence of some leadership up front, we we stepped up and did that. Um, you know, we do have uh, the provincial mask mandate right now, like you said, that supersedes. So I'm happy to support um, your uh, motion. Uh, just, you just vote down second reading, but yeah, appreciate that. Councillor Barnhart, followed by Councillor Stout. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, didn't know you were going to go that way. And honestly, I, I thought that in order to enforce this and to send the, the message to our residents that uh, we still support the mask being worn, that we needed to continue to have this mask bylaw. So I guess I'd like to ask the administration, uh, Chief Cook, if he would just speak to, is there anything that we would lose in the ability to um, ensure that our residents take seriously the provincial restrictions? by rescinding this. I, I really wouldn't want the message to be, we no longer think it's important. And I know that's not what the mayor is saying. That's not what other councillors are saying, but I wouldn't want it to be interpreted that way. So I'm just wondering if you have any advice on taking it in this direction. Uh, excellent, thank you. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Barnhart, um, thank you for the question. Uh, as a matter of fact, what we would lose by allowing our bylaw to expire is the ability for some of our municipal enforcement officers to enforce the requirement to wear temporary face coverings. Uh, as put in place by the province of Alberta, only community peace officer level ones have the authority added to their appointment under current health uh, uh, direction or direction from our health ministers and the province of Alberta to assist in enforcing uh, the wearing, the provincial requirement to wear face coverings. The RCMP will maintain that right we would lose the ability for three of our officers to enforce the requirement to wear face coverings in the city of Beaumont. Uh, speaking a little bit further to that, and our communications director, Mike Berzowski, may wish to uh, step in in just a moment. Um, I would suggest that our communication messages would continue as they have been supporting the provincial direction. Um, our communications team has been pro promoting that um, in various avenues. So we wouldn't lose the connectivity there. We would simply lose the enforcement side of things or some i should say sorry and is that the only difference between the provincial restrictions and ours is the enforcement capacity as i understand yes councillor danluck you're on mute councillor i apologize my cursor is being being weird to the new computer today I apologize for that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sir, for bringing this in this direction. Uh, I do want to support what you're suggesting here. Uh, the province does supersede us, and I, I, um, I fully respect that, and they're taking the leadership role they should have taken a while ago, and that's great. Um, I respect um, Director Cook's suggestion that we do lose some enforcement, but I think letting the AHS um, rule supersede us is the right way to go, and I do appreciate that. Um, Along with Councillor Barnhart's question a moment about communication, uh, I'd like to ensure our communication piece uh, is positioned that it tells our citizens that we still, as a council, support the mass bylaw, but we are rescinding because AHS supersedes. So message should be clear on that. I'm not saying it's not going to be, but just uh, I like to make sure that we tell our citizens that we are still in support of the mass bylaw, which I believe we are, but we're rescinding it for the reasons the AHS is now taking uh, taking precedence or taking the lead. Pardon me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Stout. Thank you, Worship. Um, yeah, um, I'd also yeah appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak to this as you've addressed it. Um, I deplored the lack of leadership from the province when we passed the original face mask bylaw, and I did that in part because um, I'd spoken to a number of residents and um, people operating facilities here who had said to me. You know, that, that council needed to take some leadership on this. Um, that leadership had now having been supplied by the province belatedly, um, but, but definitely needed. And um, it's no longer necessary for us to have the bylaw, I think. I think you're correct. Um, that said, I strongly support the need to, um, to wear face masks for the time being and um, would make sure, would want to make sure that all our messaging is is geared towards that. That this is not a no, it's not necessary. The the, the need to wear a face mask is not necessary. The need to have a, a, a bylaw making us do one appear it seems not to be. So 
I would support your amendment. Okay, appreciate that. So, Councillor Barnhart, last comment before we call the question. Mayor, I just wondered procedurally, do I need to uh, withdraw or can I vote against the fact that I voted to put it on the table? <laughs> Thank you. Winner. Mayor, if um, you wouldn't mind if I suggested um, to put with the second reading currently on the floor, um, remove what you've adjusted and then just vote whether or not you're going to give second reading to this bylaw. And then after that procedurally, have you pass, uh, have uh, make a motion to let the current bylaw either expire or um, rescind it. Yeah, you and I are on the same page. I was going to make that clear that uh, if we vote against second reading, then this bylaw dies tonight. And then I would make a further motion to rescind. Uh, so second. instead of making um, your motion to amend the well, current... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be making a motion to amend. I, I meant to be speaking against second reading. Okay, so just to be clear, thank you, Mayor, is that we currently have a motion on the table to vote whether you're in favor or not in favor for second reading. Yeah, so if we vote no on second reading, the bylaw fails and, it's, and the new bylaw does not get implemented. And then just to make sure everybody's clear, I'll probably put a motion to rescind. Ms. Winter, can I vote against my own motion? You can vote against your own motion. Yes, you can. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was legal. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so just to, one, just to finally clarify, we're, we're voting on second reading. A vote no means this bylaw fails. And then uh, to further uncloud the issue, I will make a further motion to rescind the existing bylaw in favor of the provincial one. So all those in favor of second reading, raise your hands or say aye. All those opposed to second reading, raise your hands. Nay. Nay. Nay, one, two, three, that kick. I like to say that uh, fails unanimously, doesn't carry. Fails unanimously, so this bylaw dies tonight. I move that uh, City of Beaumont rescind its current bylaw 997-21 temporary face covering bylaw, effective Chief Cook, when's a reasonable date, or just let it expire on the 31st? Uh, uh, Your Worship, actually, uh, bylaw 984 had an amending bylaw number 990-20, uh, which was a which was passed by council to extend our existing bylaw 984-20 to 1201 a.m. on January 31st, 2021. So in five days at 1201 in the morning, this bylaw will automatically die on its own. Okay, so then I'm not gonna make a motion move unless council wants you will just let it die its natural death. Okay, thank you very much. And and just having said that, I do, I, I really do think masks help. Uh, I am in support of it. It's just, it's, it's time to let the province be, take the lead and, and provide the leadership that they're supposed to. Thank you. Uh, springs us to councillor inquiries and reports. We will start off with councillor inquiries. Does, do members of council have, a, have questions of administration this evening? Oop, hang on, I lost my screen. Councillor Danluck, followed by Councillor Van Newkirk, followed by Councillor Hendricks. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. Well, we have uh, Mr. Suter uh, available. I'd ask a question. If you can provide an update for Council as to when we can expect the uh, latest edition of the uh, consultant report on the proposed Arts Centre um, program. Thank you. Not program, sorry, but the our center study we had conducted. Thank you. Uh, three of worship to Councilor Danlick. That is scheduled to come back to the Committee of the Whole in March. Thank you. Follow up? No. Councilor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you. Um, just wanted to get an update from administration on how the Don Sparrow um, skating clearing uh, program has went and to see if we've got any resident feedback and how the signage went and all that kind of stuff. Um, last update we had that there was a bunch of that in progress and then we had an update from uh, the CAO with some plowing and such and just wanted to see how we were doing with that and what kind of feedback we'd received. Thank you. Um 
Your Worship, it's Jennifer. Um, I'll uh, provide some updates here. Um, one of the things that we've been, uh, we've received a positive and negative feedback. Uh, one of the items that we're addressing right now is um, finishing putting up some signage. Our vendor had to order more material. So we've got some, still some new signage on its way and that has to do with the bylaw. Um, and uh, number and things like that, but we have made some temporary modifications. So the signage is uh, still pending. We have, um, as far as feedback, one of the requests came in from a couple of residents asking to have uh, the skating path or the, the oval going around the island. Um, with the research with our current uh, risk uh, mitigation insurance broker, one of the things that they've, uh, educated us on is to try in all of our rinks, outdoor rinks, including this, to try to eliminate uh, competing activities. By having the oval around the island, what we're gonna be doing is introducing a higher risk for the participants on there by having potential pucks flying into that skating pathway. Um, because we did some research, there was some requests to see if we get it back around the island. Um, and uh, we're looking at that, but right now what we've set up is to maintain the two uh, activities as separate. We're doing uh, Zambon, we're actually uh, doing hot uh, flushes on the ice. So we are trying to maintain that. Um, we're still challenged and with Dawn Sparrow itself, there's some other things that we're gonna be working on during the spring. Um, and that's going to be going through with the wayfinding project that we've already approved in 2021 uh, throughout the city. And we had that 2021, 2022 as we presented at budget time. Um, but we will be providing and looking at how we can enhance um, throughout the parks and including Don Sparrow. Um, so that's still an outstanding item. Uh, one of the suggestions uh, that, and maybe I'm speaking too much so you can <laughs> let me know if I'm talking too much but one of the other items came up was the um, residents that would like to see more activity uh, throughout the park um, they've asked for other things um, we're just putting that through uh, Paul or through uh, Mr. Suter and his recreational team to see if there's other activities but we want to wait until we actually have the storm pond and the multi-use field uh, created before we introduce other activities right now, but we do have that on our list. Well, it's a great update, thank you. And uh, if we ever do get the uh, oval around the island, Councillor Danilak and I are gonna be doing some races. So any of you guys <laughs> are willing to come down and watch that, uh, it'd be fun, so. Perfect, I can put up the speed uh, speedometer. Uh. <laughs> a, yeah, let's get the speed camera out there and see how yeah. that goes. No, well, thank you. And and the reason I ask for the feedback is because I know that you have been getting a lot in administration and, and I really want people to know that, you know, the feedback is being heard um, and, you know, that you're working through things. And I think that's really important to, uh, for people to know that you're there. So thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hendricks, followed by Councillor Barnhart. Uh, Your Worship, thank you. Uh, my question pertains to the front entrance doors of the uh, city of Beaumont's administrative office. Um, we've of course had an upgrade and a new set of doors and a side light installed. Uh, the previous door used to have a, a slot that you could put your bills through the door itself, the physical door, uh, that slot's been removed. Uh, I've heard from some people just confused by uh, my answer that there is an ability to bring uh, your, your hand held uh, check and bills to the town office. Uh, I did stop by, had a look, and there's a uh, there's a brown box that looks like a mailbox adjacent to the uh, to the door on the other side of the, uh, uh, let's call it the handicap rail, which assists with the overhead, which assists with the operator for the handicapped uh, door. And I'm just suggesting politely if we could perhaps get a, uh, a sign or a note, I believe the brown box is now our new mailbox instead of the slot. There is no uh, marker or indicator or a sign on it. And I did witness while I was there, somebody who also seemed to try to figure out what to do with their, their particular check. So, and uh, it found a, a little handle on the top, which ultimately looks like it's a mailbox. So I think that's how you do it now, moving forward. So I think a sign or note or something would, would be helpful. So thank you. 
I'll put that on my action list. Councilor Barnhart. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, to the administration, my question is around and uh, dog parks, off-leash dog parks. The uh, enforcement of picking up waste after the dogs, I, I saw some correspondence this week and I wondered whether we are doing that or we are putting up signs enforcing that, that dog owners who I think should be doing that. Just what's the status of that? And I certainly understand, I didn't give you a heads up if you need to get back to us on that. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Councilor Barnhart. Uh, I'll, I'll have to get back to you up, up with that. I'll have to check with the uh, municipal enforcement. Okay, thank you. All right, appreciate that. Uh, CA, I got one question for the CAO, and if you're going to cover it in your in your update, that's fine. Just put me off. Um, but we've had uh, these continuing restrictions on our on our uh, recreational facilities. Do we know <laughs> when those costs might be coming back to council? Yes, I, think I was going to cover that off, but this, this works out just fine. I was on a call this afternoon. We've got a couple moving targets here, probably three of them. One is uh, Hockey Alberta and what the decision is going to be as far as the, the salvaging the hockey season. The other, obviously, is the province and whether they're going to make a decision on opening. Uh, Dr. Hinshaw today uh, talked a lot about uh, the effect of the variant is having on the measures and is suggesting that once they do start to lift the restrictions, that they're going to be lifted in phases. And if you remember in stages, if you remember when with the first uh, set of opening up uh, occurred relaunch strategy, if you will, they started with smaller activities and then worked themselves up to bigger activities. The variant is throwing a little bit of a kink into it because of its ability to spread so fast. And they're really concerned again about the volume uh, of people in the hospital. So that they're gonna, they left me with the impression today that they're gonna be extra careful before they start lifting those restrictions. So I spoke with Mr. Souter and we're crunching some numbers and, and we're hoping to hear from Hockey Alberta in the next day or two, and then we'll come back to council with a proposal uh, for our arenas. Thank you, appreciate the update. Uh, Councilor Danlock, final question and then we'll, or final, thank you, you know, final Stewart. questioner. I don't know if you have more than one. <laughs> Just one question, thank you, Mayor Stewart. Uh, just to Mr. Dollar, I see he may be on the on the on the call this evening. Uh, just an approximate timeline when you anticipate letting council know as to the financial position we had in uh, in 2020, whether we are declaring a surplus or deficit on operating. I imagine sometime probably in in February or March. It's by no means a rush. This question, but a ballpark idea would be appreciated. Or would you anticipate uh, being able to do that for us? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Danilak, thanks for your question. We're looking possibly bringing something to Council in terms of a draft year-end statement around uh, the end of February. Um, so right now, that's kind of the tentative date that we have. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Are there any members of Council wishing to make a statement this evening? Okay. Seeing none, CEO's update. I'll be brief. Uh, I covered off some of it already. Again, the, the effects of the, of the variance on, on the province's um, decisions uh, that was communicated to us today. Uh, recap in Beaumont, the last 24 hours, uh, we recorded seven additional cases. So this virus is still alive and well in our community. We had no additional recovery. So our, so our active cases sitting at, at 31. The message from the province is clear that around the, uh, the load on the health care. And while the, the, the numbers are going down, and that's a good thing, uh, as are the hospital beds. There's still over 600 people in, in hospital and 108 of those in the ICU. So that's really one of the, the more important measures that the province is communicating to us. One uh, positive thing that Dr. Hinshaw mentioned today was uh, around the, the cases in the five to 18 year old range. And this goes directly to the work that the schools are doing and they're doing a, a heck of a job. The, the caseloads in the five to age five to 18 are, are coming down. Um, so her, her point was that, that the schools are not the problem here and, and nobody is saying they are, but I think it's just a testament to, uh, to how well uh, the, the, the school board is handling it and how the parents are taking this serious. Uh, today we received a letter from the Minister of Children's Services uh, for a, a just additional child care funding. Uh, relief. Uh, so this is that directly related to COVID and it equates to a one-time payment of uh, $9,900 uh, for our uh, after school and our early learning. So I just got that later today. You'll see a copy of the, the letter in your information package. So so that's it. The letter was nice. It's basically saying they're recognizing, you know, that the, the extra care that's required at this time and, and how 
how well it's being handled uh, by the by the child care uh, giver. So that's my update for tonight. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, brings us to item 12A correspondence uh, from we received some correspondence from Statistics Canada. Uh, the reason this didn't make the, the consent agenda tonight is because there is an action item in relation to the correspondence. Um, so I'd like to move that Council for the City of Beaumont support the 2021 Census and encourage all residents to complete their Census questionnaire online at www.census.gc.ca. So discussion on the motion? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that carries unanimously. Do members of council have a notice of motion this evening? Okay, seeing none, can I get a motion to move into closed session? Then we'll take a quick five and then get back at it. Councillor Stout? Yes, I move we go into closed session, Your Worship. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries you as we. All right, so we'll take a. Uh, just to the members of the public that are watching, we just we, we've come out of closed session. Uh, we do have one piece of business arising, and so I will ask Councillor Munkoff Swain um, to make the motion arising from the business. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the motion is that Council direct administration to schedule a public special council meeting on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 at 5 p.m. for Council to consider a land purchase as discussed in camera and further direct administration to bring forward a draft borrowing bylaw for first reading. Thank you very much. So I'll open it up to members of Council for discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. And that carries unanimously. Uh, appreciate uh, appreciate council and administration's time this evening. This is uh, this turned into a rather long one. It's uh, 20 to 10, uh, but I do appreciate uh, sticking through. We covered a number of weighty subjects tonight, including our West Recreation lands, our mask bylaw, and, uh, and now a land purchase. So appreciate your time and time this evening and uh, look forward to seeing you all next week at the special council meeting. Um, this meeting is adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>